this. All right, kicked on the stream again. See what happens now. Hey Ben, don't you Ben, don't you use a uh, fan or something plugged in? I have a couple of things going up here in the man cave. Ah. Uh. All right, this thing is uh, is still it's still dropping frames like fucking crazy. I don't know what's going on. I am plugged into my interwebs. Did you pay your bill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on here. They're not they're not trying to you're not over your data limit or anything, are you? No, I have unlimited data. I've yeah, got yeah. I have I have uh gigabit fiber optic internet. It's, it's oh, probably nice. It's probably slowing down for my computer. It's probably. It's like, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, usually I'm good when I've got, when I plug in with my, uh, with my hardwire. So I don't know what the heck is going on here. Hmm. This is no bueno. I got two and a half minutes to figure out what the hell is going on. So I am showing like red across the board. Hmm. Go bounce your router. Uh, yeah, I could do that, but I really don't want to. I mean, it's by the time it comes back up, it'll be way late. But looks like we're. Yep. It's uh, already cycling out there. So we're coming in and out, so I don't know. I'm going to check my network adapters. Hi, hi, hi. <clears throat> so let's see. I am green. I am plugged in. Look at there. Look at there. All right. Now that we're here and I'm way late on starting the music, let's kick this bad boy off because I want to get it going before something else falls apart. I think what happened was, Jay, is the stream was waiting for you to show up. Now that you're here, I'm green across the board. So let's get this thing going. Hey, should I also log into Twitch or No, you don't have to, but a lot of guys do because they like to watch the stream and inter interact with the audience and stuff.
over uh, I uh, are the hell? I don't know, I'm just I'm trying assuming to make that my, was unintentional. I'm tr I'm, no, I'm trying to sound like our new our new guy. <laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome finally to the next episode of 1E1 Shots. I am Sean, your host, bringing you together with the finest first edition players that the interwebs has to offer. I apologize for the slightly late start. Um, earlier, I had this pop-up that uh, Norton uh, threw a fit and I had to reinstall and do some configuration changes, not knowing that my default setting was turn the VPN on. And apparently the VPN doesn't like uh, OBS talking to Twitch through the VPN. So it was like dropping packets like crazy. We were running for like five minutes and I was already like 10,000 drop packets. And so it took me a little bit to figure out what the heck was going on. Then I remembered, of course, Norton. What? Because why not? You know, protect ourselves from the internet. Well, at the same time, it won't let us on the internet, which I guess is the only real way to protect us from the internet. So I got it fixed. I'm actually hardwired in now. So we should not have any problems tonight. Because if I got problems when I'm on my ethernet hardwire, then we have a problem because I got some some pretty decent interwebs here. So I'd like to welcome everybody uh, into the show tonight. Um, we know you could be lots of places on your Monday night, but um, here admiring our shit show is where else would you rather be, right? So we definitely appreciate you guys showing up. Um, players, welcome one, welcome all. And uh, we have a new guy that might be starting tonight. He's listening in. Um, but we'll see if we can actually squeeze him in as our party tonight tries to escape from the, uh, from the erupting Mount Flame and Blood. So we'll see. We'll see what happens if they're able to make it off the island or not. So, um, as always, let's talk a little bit about, uh, who we are and what we do. Of course, we are a Dungeons and Dragons stream. We run first edition every Monday night, 7.30 to 11.30-ish. Um, after that, we always have our after party. So if you can stay a little later, hang out with us, shoot the breeze. Um, we talk real talk, like how can we not, how can we not continue to call ourselves the gnarly toe guild? Because that just sounds nasty, but it's so funny as hell. I just, I, I don't know. So maybe we can come up with a, a, an actual group name down the road, but yeah. So that's sort of the things that we talk about on the after party. Hopefully you can hang out with us. I know it gets kind of late for a lot of people, especially on the East coast of the United States, but if you can hang with us, that's what we're going to do. Um, of course, if you like, uh, fifth edition or Dungeons Dragons in general, but fifth edition specifically every other Friday we run on this same stream. We have a fifth edition game that we run. Um, that game's more campaign heavy, um, meaning your traditional campaign players, you know, interacting with the society and, and sort of a contiguous story as the, as the things advance or maybe story arcs uh, as, as they may go. But this one is what we call 1E one shots, kind of like your old school days. Uh, TSR published a module. You and your friends bought the module. You got your characters together and you went out and you did your thing. Not a lot of interaction um, in and out. Well, some people did it that way. A lot of people developed campaigns even on first and second edition. But I used to just love grabbing the adventure module and going. So that's kind of the motif that we have here. So once our party is done with this particular series of adventures they have been if you've been following us going through the against the slave lords series this is um a4 escape from the dungeons of the slave lords or whatever it's called something to that effect where our party was captured um at the tail end of a3 and tossed into the pits as the apparently the earth dragon has spoken and the uh one of the the slave lords stallman clem who is a priest of the earth dragon has decreed that the earth dragon spoken and the requires and demands sacrifice. And so he threw him in the pit. And fortunately at the end of last episode, the party managed to escape through the quick thinking and some actually in, ingenious um, ways to get out of there. I was most impressed and therefore granted them additional experience when he left. So yeah, so that's the two games that we play here. Um, of course, as you know, as you, as you watch any Twitch stream, uh, you can earn the tokens by watching that stream, uh, by interacting. The more you interact, the faster your tokens go, et cetera, et cetera. But you can trade those tokens in for our, for our players or for your humble DM, of course. By trading those tokens in, you can buy a nat one or a nat 20. All you have to do is tell us who it's assigned to. If you can't decide who it's assigned to, we will just put it in the party pool and let them use it at will. 
uh, whenever the party comes to an agreement that they can use it, they'll go ahead and do it then. So of course you can do nat one, you can do a nat 20, and all that means is that any dice roll um, that they roll, they can replace with that particular one, or they can replace my dice roll with that. So if I roll a nat one, and they say, no, we want you to crit us, and they, they can then give me the nat 20, and then that's how that would work, right? So any dice roll that they can swap, they don't even have to roll the dice. If they want to say, I'm just going to use it, they can use it. So the party could definitely use that. So for, for those of you that have followed along for any length of time, you know that these electronic dice just don't just aren't real friendly sometimes, man. It just can't hit nothing. And so maybe someday we'll have it where all of our players can use their own dice. But for right now, we are on the VTT with electronics. So go ahead and spend those tokens, man. Buy the party, you know, some of the some of the things that they need. Uh, yeah. Ronnie's racking up those tokens he can't use. You can use them on our fifth edition stream, though, Ronnie. You're more than welcome. Uh, I think Monkey's the only one who can't use his tokens at all on this stream because he's in both games, so it kind of sucks to be him. But we need to get offline and figure out a way that he can use his tokens for something. But um, but one other way that you can help support the stream, a few other ways you can help support the stream, obviously follow. Uh, you can click that subscribe button if you so desire. Um, obviously, you can hit the tip jar. We've got a merch channel. So everything that you need is on our about page. You just click those links and check us out. You can find us on Twitter. We got a YouTube channel where if Twitch only holds these, uh, these streams that we do for like two weeks and that, but I export everything over to YouTube. So if you want to catch any of the, the older streams uh, from back in the day when we first started, it hasn't changed much. It's still a crap show, but that's okay. We have fun. Um, but last but not least, one of the recent things we've implemented, um, if you want to, uh, for every 200 bits cheered, um, uh, actually, no, I take that back. It's going to be every 100 bits cheered. For each 100 bits cheered, you can give a plus one on a dice roll to any specific player you choose. Now, that does require you to pick a player. If you absolutely cannot pick a player, I'll make the players roll dice, and the highest roll will grab that particular um, plus one. They can. You can never have more than a plus five, which you can have a bunch of plus fives. So if you want to cheer 500 for somebody, give uh, Zadkiel a, a plus five on one of his dice rolls. Those, uh, those particular um, items or those particular gifts um, carry over stream to stream because if you're going to, you know, break down and, and help support the stream and spend your hard-earned cash, the least I can do is allow the players to hold on to those uh, until whenever they want to use them. Now, I believe every player on this group, except for two, our new player, uh, Mithandar, as well as one other, I think Ronnie used a plus one um, on his, uh, uh, no, I take it back, uh, Barris. Oh, let's see. No, I, somebody had a plus two and it went down to plus one. I think it's Ronnie. Ronnie used one. I did. Um, yep. So, so Barris has a plus one. Deglin has a, Plus two, Ronnie has a plus one. Um, Varys, our rogue, has a plus one, and Zadkiel has a plus two. So, and the DM has nothing because nobody loves a DM more than the DM. So, um, but yeah, so if you want to cheer 100 bits, give somebody a plus one, you can do that. Like I said, players, you cannot have more than a plus five. We'll keep track of it. You can as well uh, also keep track of it on your character sheet, um, and they just carry over. So if somebody gives a thousand, the bits to one player, that player would then have two plus five. So I definitely, uh, <laughs> monkey spending his tokens, how he sees fit. Yep. -er, so, so yeah, man. So I definitely appreciate you guys, uh, um, stopping by tonight. And last but not least, of course, if you like Greyhawk in general, you got to go check out the Greyhawk creatives team page. That's twitch.tv slash team slash Greyhawk creatives instituted by Lord Gazumba himself. Um, and, uh, I haven't been over there in a couple of weeks, but last time I was there, there was probably a baker's dozen or plus or minus a couple. Um, and it's specifically Greyhawk content, um, whether it's D and D gaming, um, or it's, uh, like Anna Meyer has her mapping stream that she does. Um, I know Lord Kazumba not only does his Thursday night game, um, but he also has other content, um, with a lot of the big names, uh, in the, in the industry. So I highly encourage you to go check out that team page and uh, and to see what we're all about. So, so yeah, so we are the World of Greyhawk currently in the Pomarge players. I want to welcome everybody. 
Um, let's talk a little bit about what happened last week. So as I said, at the end of the, the previous adventure, Assault on the Area of the Slave Lords, our party did defeat the Slave Lords on their little home spot, but two of the Slave Lords did escape and in fact, there were only five there to begin with. Out of the possible nine slave lords, there were five there. The party managed to take down three of them, but two of them escaped, including Stallman Klim, the uh, um, the priest, or the high priest, if you will, of the earth dragon. He is the one who tortured and beat up and um, got the party to break down and talk about who it was that they had been hired by. And then uh, all hell began to break, break loose as lots of uh, earthquake events, um, shaking and moaning and groaning sounded like giant gas build up deep beneath the earth. And then it would just sort of rumble out, uh, causing dust and debris to fall everywhere, walls to crack, floors to crack. And our party was then thrust down into a, a dark, lightless series of tunnels and as they worked their way through it was envisioned that they were walking through old volcanic tubes so as this thing was going on around them um, they realized that uh, something was amiss but they managed to escape through quick thought of Ronnie turning himself into a crocodile in a water area he managed to easily swim and find an escape route and then led the rest of the party um, on the route heading out. And so fortunately, everybody managed to make it out. Um, and this was about five minutes ago as they sort of stumbled out um, onto the uh, onto the sandy slash rocky shores of the island that sits in the middle of the crater of Mount Flame and Blut. Um, and as I described before, um, I'll just sort of, well, I'll give sort of that description again as you guys came out. The cave behind you as you came out collapsed just as the last of you managed to escape onto the beaches, pushing water out in a big wave. You have emerged on the shore of the crater lake. The lake itself froths as white capped waves tossed wildly back and forth, colliding and building upon one another. Everywhere, fish, lake eel, other freshwater um, uh, and freshwater squid leap from the surface of the lake, crazily trying to escape the unaccustomed vibrations and obviously buildup of heat coming from below. The far rim of the crater lake, about a mile and a half away, seems to tremble slightly as you look at it. On the island behind you, there is a cliff, perhaps 30 to 40 feet tall. Parts of it seem to have just literally crumbled and stones are dislodging themselves tumbling down in the continuing tremors. A huge dark cloud rises from somewhere on the western part of the island beyond the bluff and it fills half the sky before you. The island itself quivers and quakes continuously, jostling your legs beneath you, making you sort of bow-legged as you stand to try to keep your balance uh, as you're being jostled back and forth with all these geothermal events just sort of erupting around you. Just to the north and the south of this particular point begin beaches which run around the curvature of the island. In both directions, the bluff recedes from the beach and to trees, many of which are now fallen and that grow in the space between the hill and the lake. You can see out on the water a fishing boat trying to make its way with great difficulty toward the outer shore, trying to head away from the island as people seek their escape. Um, and like I said, you can see the shore itself about uh, a half a mile to the north. Southwest, perhaps a quarter of a mile away, you can see crackling flames leap uh, across the treetops. And that is where we are going to begin tonight's game as you guys find yourselves standing on this rocky shore. Now, I want to say, first of all, that the uh by the way i played music so you guys if you uh, can't remember how to uh dim the noise let me know um the map on this island is not to scale per se the map itself is but the tokens are not so if you look each one of these tokens is about 100 feet right so all of you are standing 
right here where Barris is at. You guys are all actually standing right there because that's where the cave managed to come out. Or where you escaped the cave, I should say. You can see the beach is running to the south around the cliffs. In that direction, you can see the, uh, the lava sort of coming down the hill, catching the trees on fire over here. You can see the ruins of some structure over in this direction. Um, look to be maybe a little outpost here on this side of the island uh, in the farming areas. Perhaps the uh, slave lords had a group of overwatch folks that are watching the slaves kind of run the fields. Um, to the north, you can see that the beach as well as the uh, um, uh, each one of these dashed lines is sort of like a contour line. Um, so you can see it slopes upward behind you. So you're actually on the beach um, and it's a very steep cliff like right where you're at. I'm actually going to move um, you guys over into the water because it's very steep. Like if you see where Varus is at, let's say that's where you guys came out like right here. It's very steep. So you can see those three contour lines very close together indicates that it's a very steep slope um, going up. But you can see the lava flowing down. And you can see, you can follow the beach to the north around the edge if that's the direction you want to go. Yeah, and that's, you know, you know. This is, yep, this is where we are going to pick up tonight's game. As you guys tell me and decide, what do we want to do? Do we want to try to, like, climb up this bluff that's about 30 feet high? It's very steep. Um, or are we going to follow the beach around the edge and try to get over to the north end where it's a little... You can see it kind of slopes down. It's not quite as steep as it gets to the north end of the island as the hills kind of swoop down into the beach area. Um, or what do we want to do? Well, we need to either get some here and a boat or just get a boat and get out of here. So okay. um, I think going north to the docks and the the tail, because they're all going to be getting the heck off the island as well. Right. They're not going to stay here. So, in the pandemonium, we might be able to take a few yards or grab some here and a boat and get out of here. Okay. We don't have, I'm not, I don't, I'm not risking climbing up the hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yeah, I'm good with that. Path of least resistance seems to. Uh, beat ahead north, keep the hill between us and the lava as best we can. Okay. You guys Damn, I'm going to move along. I'm going to be in the water swimming unobserved next to the party. Okay. You're going to stay in your, your guise as a crocodile. All right. Who's going to lead the way along the beach, please? We always got the best uh, eyesight. Well, it's, you guys are outside now. It is, you realize, probably midday-ish. You know, maybe 1, 2 o'clock, give or take, something like that. Yeah, I mean... Okay. But we need to see people that are might be ahead of us, like guards or whatever. That yeah. Want to yeah. Yeah. As you move, as you move your way, you, you're moving through the through the, the beach, the sandy beach, right? It's, it's not mm -hmm. like, it's, it's not completely soaked yet because you could tell that this, the water sloshing up coming from the uh, the lake, sloshing onto the uh, the beach itself, is beginning to sort of seep into and, and um, weigh down the sand. So it makes it a little more firm. So you're not like sort of digging in, you know, how you run through d um, dry sand, you're, you sort of sink in it, takes a little more energy. The sand is becoming a little more firm as you guys move your way um, north, um, tracking along the, the edge of the, the, the bluff. Um, as you reach... Um, a, a point toward the north, you see that it begins to bend away, heading back up toward Sutterham and the docks. Right here, you can see that a section of the beach itself is completely washed up um, with uh, rack and wreckage tossed up by the waves. So things that have been in the, probably on the ocean floor are now sort of thrown up. Um, things that people have just sort of thrown off the boats or something like that, perhaps, or whatever. But there's just this whole um, slew of sludge that has been thrown up on the beach. You see it's thick with algae, flopping fish, um, just completely cover the, the beachy area um, where you guys are, are coming upon. Anything useful? 
Um, you know, the wood, you could probably grab a, a couple of uh, large sticks of wood and use them as clubs for those that don't already have clubs. Yes, I, I would say that. Well, we don't have any shoes on, so I, I'd avoid stepping in it. <laughs> yeah. Possible. Yeah, just trying to get around it and mo keep moving. Don't really okay. have time to... Yeah, it's there's here. the only way to get around it would be to swim out into the lake or to climb up on the hill. Okay. All the way you, to you the can, top. No, you could probably go about maybe halfway or so to to try to get around it. Um, but I would need a I would need a is dexterity. Any, I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead. Is there any um like boots shoes? Uh, yeah, no, you don't. You don't see any clothing of any type. It's just detritus and stuff that's been kind of tossed up. Okay. Yeah, I think Barris is just gonna kind of run through it and grab himself a club. It'll go with his spear that he can barely use. All right. Um, let me see if uh, what chance you have of finding anything. So as Barris moves up into. Um, into to kind of grab himself a club. He sort of pulls his stuff off and this sort of swash of algae sort of washes down onto him. Suddenly he feels this burning, stinging sensation. As he looks down, he's standing in this sort of sludgy green slime that's beginning to eat into his feet, taking away the skin. Uh, Jump in the water. Get the his acid or something. Get it that, off. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> as he initially takes four hit points of damage, um, as this begins to eat away his flesh, turning your flesh into green slime. Oh, green slime. Ooh. Lovely. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to head towards my uh, alligator crocodile friend. Okay. Um, Ronnie, you see suddenly... Barris sort of appears in the water and he's running and and the pain now begins to uh to sink in as you watch your feet slowly disintegrating as this green slime starts to eat away what are you guys gonna do uh, i'll flap my tail at him in case he wants to grab it <laughs> okay as Barris suffers 12 hit points of damage this round oh, from the slime <laughs> as it's beginning to eat into his feet. Hey, been nice knowing you guys. Oh, shit. Uh, can I... Shit, we gotta have something that'll wipe it off. Use the board that he grabbed and try to scrape it off his feet. Okay, go ahead and give me... Uh, first of all, Barris, give me a Constitution's... Uh, or not constitution, but a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Give me a, uh, petrification. Uh, yeah, well, nah, yeah, we'll use that. Petrification polymorph saving throw. And I need Deglin to give me a dexterity check. Any, um, modifiers here or just straight up? Ooh, nice. Uh, no, just straight up. All right. As Barris made his save. Dang! I like it. I dig it, man. Um, let's see. So, <laughs> he's melting, he's melting. So, 1,500. So, that means um, we got to figure out how... Uh, let me uh, hang on a second here. So, damn weirdo, you just cheered 1,500 bits. That indicates... Um, a total of three plus fives for any three players, or you can break it down for every 100. Each player can get a plus one on a roll. So, uh, weirdo, you just let us know who you want those bits to go to. All right. Um, so he made a save. Uh, Deglin, you just don't get there. Just uh, uh, you don't get there fast enough um, this round, as Barris takes another eight hit points of damage. However, by the end of that next one, Deglin manages to scrape all the green slime off and get it off of his feet. However, Barris, you are now going to be at a minus two on your dexterity. All right. 
Is that a uh, permanent or temp? Uh, or until you until you are magically healed in some way, it is going to be a permanent. All right, I can heal him somewhat. I can do uh, cure serious. Uh, yeah, you can do cure serious, but that'll give us hit points, but that won't give us dexterity back. It's going to require more of a restoration type spell. I don't have it. How far down are you on hit points? Um, 28 out of 63, and uh, my dex is uh, so so low that I have a negative now. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and and try to do cure serious. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Let's All right. <laughs> Woo, go navy, true. Um. All right. 2d8 plus one. You probably end up having, I don't know if it's set on the spells to roll. You may just have to roll it manually. Yeah. 2d, 2d8 plus 1. All right, 12. You, get 12, you get 12 hit points back from Cure Serious Wounds. Much obliged. Hopefully that'll hold them over until we can get to place. Yeah. Says you. First One of chance. my gnarly toes grew back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, as you guys manage to uh, work your way, I guess I should have made it up here, but you guys manage to work your way further down. You finally come to a spot where the cliff bluff itself sort of tapers down. Um, there's still a small little rise like a little hillock that goes up onto a flat area off of the beach um, or you can continue to follow the beach depending upon what you guys want to do uh, how far up the hillock would it take? um it's 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 a 10 foot but it's not straight up right so it's sort of more of a sloping one right so you guys can sort of scramble up onto the flat grassy plain type area or you can continue to follow along. It's a little bit of a steep thing, you know what I mean? But get a running start. Um, you could probably scramble your way up onto, or you, again, you can continue your way. Do you guys just cough? We can either... Well, I don't want to go too far away from uh, the druid. He's out in the water still. Let's just, let's just stay here and continue. get to the get to the dots. I mean, we should be able to see them now, right? We well, we're on the sandy beach, right? Yeah, yes. I mean, yeah, um, we probably could make camp here. We the lava's coming at us. Lava's coming, man. <laughs> well, we could after lava. I mean, is it fast flowing or is it slow flowing? It's it's we a. Don't know. <laughs> the earth is shaking, man. For those that have ever, yeah, the earth is shaking. You see it flowing down the hill. You figure within another hour or two, it's going to consume where you're standing at the beach easily. Yeah, we don't have time so it's, for it's that. not like it's blowing like Mount Vesuvius, but it sort of popped the cork, and now the lava is just sort of blowing. Now, uh, what over do we the top. have as far as weapons? We have what, the, same, the same stuff that you guys had down in the dungeons. That's what All you right, got. I'm going to put my loincloth back on. Okay, thank you. That's, that's why I was suggesting we get. Where there used to be civilization and trying to acquire some stuff and a boat. <laughs> Is there any way we can uh, search the sand for any wreckage? Well, that's that's kind of what you guys did when you first walked past and got caught up in the green slime. Yeah, yeah. Barris shows you his foot and says, "Look, wreckage." <laughs> there's, What's there's, left of his foot? More all right. stumpy. Well, there's all there's gotta... some... Yeah. Well, no one's yeah. got a metal detector, so that's out of the question. Um, I, I think we probably do, do. We need to carry him. No, he can walk, but he is his dexterity is he's been wounded on the feet for sure. Yeah, um, and I have a crusty spear I can use as a crutch. I I suggest we probably walk like in the shallow water. Okay, that's where I'm gonna walk. Like, okay, kind of as you guys water. work your way, continuing along the edge of the beach coming around the as i said the the bluff begins to slope away and you can see the high rising walls of the uh um of sutterham 
uh, off in the distance. Varus, could you please roll a six-sided dice for me? All right. Suddenly, as you get right there, Varus, you hear this roar as this giant snapping turtle's head comes flying out of the water. Oh, we need to kill that. I need to kill oh, Honey, why are you protecting me? He <laughs> means <laughs> so surprisingly. It's, it's a turtle, right? So let's, it's got to be a giant. Slow. It's a giant snapping turtle as it snaps at Varus. But uh, what's uh, Varus's current armor class? Six. It is six. So I want to double check because it, it has you as two on the sheet. So armor class. Yeah, I, I don't think a six. I don't think a six hits though, because it's not that big. Yeah, it needs. It needs a. Yeah, it needs a. Um, let's see. Your six. Oh, that was close. It needed a seven to hit you, but it rolled a six. As it missed. As you, you hear the. Uh, as you hear the roar. As let us now. Ooh, I need that right shell now. for a shield. Uh, as we... We don't have time to kill this thing. We don't have time for this. Oh, wait, got an alligator. He can eat it. Yep. All right. Here we go. Let us try... We're desperate, gentlemen. We gotta do so. Actions as we move to a combat. Let's go... First, Deglin. Actions. If we're fighting, then I'll try to hit it in the head or the leg. With. I have a, I have that femur club. Okay. We have a club. Ronnie. I'm going to chomp and swipe at that monster. All righty. Varus. You Come have on, anything? I'm going to and sling it. Sling? Okay. Yep. Sad kill. I'm going to hit it. With? My fists. Okay. All right, Stumpy. Well, I'm going to slowly make my way up in reserves. Okay. You have yeah. any plan of what you're going to do? You just have the uh, with the spear. The spear. Um, yeah. I'm going to hold it tightly and not release it. <laughs> if I get close <laughs> enough, I'll stab it. Oh, okay. you're right. I have a spear, but I can't use a spear. I'm a paladin. Oh, bummer. You can you hit it. With have, you have a short sword, man. That's right. You oh, had that. Oh, yeah. Game. Yeah. But he got the short sword. Yeah, you took yeah. it from the uh, kobold. Oh, I'm using the short sword. Otherwise, I'm using it. <laughs> I am so glad that somebody pays attention in this game. I'm going to oh, kick wait a minute. it with I'm my foot. I'm not a cleric. I was my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. As we go into combat. This is what happens when you play too many campaigns. You get confused. Exactly. As I have said, as once again it targets Varus with a large snap. And it hits. Hits Varus for 14 hit points of damage. Gee, we need to avoid this thing. <laughs> hey, man, what do you want me to tell you? All right, Deglin. Uh, I'm going to, I guess, uh, smack it with the club. Okay. Yeah, don't worry no. about moving. Yeah, don't worry about moving yourselves around on here because it's not the scale. We're just going to consider you guys fighting on a beach, and I don't have a beach map to put on there, so. All right. Ain't that a beach. Ain't that a beach. No. Yes. Anything else from you? Ronnie. Uh, Sorry. No. All right. Ronnie. First one's going to be the claw. Second one's going to be the bite. So you instinctively see, Ronnie, that this thing has a huge hard shell that's almost impossible to break through. But boy, he has some tasty little meaty parts on his tail, legs, and neck area. Well, I'm going for a, a tasty meaty part. Okay. And you still, as you bite down on it, it sort of senses you coming. It just, you barely manage to scrape along its leg as this thing lets out a hiss. You get two attacks? Two attacks. The first one was my swipe. The second was the bite. Gotcha. So you, uh, let's see, armor, it's armor class five. Three hit die monster. 
Three hit die monster. Armor class five. Uh, that hits. You need an 11 or better to hit it. Three is better than none. All right. Anything else? Just drag it out the sea so we can run past. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to it, DM, so that I can do a, what do they call that when you spin around in a circle? Death spin. Yeah, they, death where they roll. roll you. Yeah, this thing's, you find this thing is going to be way too big. It probably weighs a good six, 700 pounds. I got an idea. All right. Barris, anything that you want to try? Yes, sir. I'm going to try a spear thrust to the snout if I can make it. Okay. You can get up there, and you are able to lunge Excellent. at it from a distance, even though it's All a short right. spear. Stumpy, stumpy, stump stab. All right, 16 yeah. hits. Uh, let's see. Ooh, a one point of damage. <laughs> I'm just double checking. You are what level? Seventh level? Yes, sir. Seventh level ranger against armor 11. class. Yep, needs an 11 to hit armor class 5. Nicely done with one hit point of damage. Even better. One is better than zero, I just got to say. Varus. All right, I'm going to back him and uh, sling it. All right, as it snaps at you, you manage to release your sling. Um, eighth level thief against armor class five. I think that misses. Uh, yeah, you needed a fourteen. You don't have yeah. a dexterity bonus. That is my. Oh, my okay. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was a dragon turtle's roll. Sorry, my bad. I was looking. It's like, oh, yep. No, he missed. Uh, okay. And last but not least, Zad kill. Yeah, just a question. Yes. This is a turtle, right? He has a shell. Yes. So I'm pretty strong. Can I flip him on his back so he can't move? Uh, Probably not. This thing is huge and it's buried in the water. Um, You would have to oh, wait out yeah. in the water to try to... Yeah, I doubt it. And when you say large, he's like, I roll for large damage? Yes. Okay, gotcha. All right, I'm going to attack it. I'm going to charge it. Yeah. Okay. Lords of Light. All right, here we go. There we go. I got it targeted. Okay. okay. You can do this. No, just, I don't see it. All right, so just I just got to attack. Just have to be smarter than the dice. All right, Let's so go. I got a question. Since mm -hmm. I had one attack last time I fought, do I get my yep. two attacks now, or do no, I? No, it to... starts over with each combat. Okay. Seventeen hits. Go ahead and roll your damage. Don't forget your strength bonus. Okay, I don't know. Is it one to eight for short sword? Short sword is one d six, and then you add your. Uh, you get a plus three on your strength, right? Yeah, but you said it was large. Is it a one eight on large? Uh, I thought short swords are the same for both large and small. I think Let's they're one d eight versus large. You are correct. It is a d eight. Thank okay. you for correcting me. So d eight plus three. Roll a one. Roll a one. Roll a one. Ten hit points of damage. Nice. As you manage to cleave into this, now let me roll a twenty cider here real quick. He fails. As you slam into him, you cut this huge swath of damage all the way down its neck, almost to where its head goes into the shell. And suddenly this thing like zoop, tucks its legs in and pulls its head inside its shell. What do you guys want to do next? As you see this thing sort of tucks away and it's no longer attacking, it obviously knows... <laughs> if we can run past it, I think we should. <laughs> yeah, DM, I'll be right next to this thing. So if he pokes his little beady head out, I'm going to Mario Kart that shell and launch it. 
but yep. I'll let these guys go past and then I'll catch up. Okay. All right. I think it's almost dead. We could probably just guard each hole and just stab whatever comes out. What do y'all think? I mean, uh, I don't, don't want to linger here. I want to. I want to get moving. Yeah, Barris looks get, down get on his foot island. and looks at you and starts walking up the beach. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm doing nasty mine. I'm. I'm. I'm out of here. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I'll keep guard on the turtle until everyone's passed safely, and then I'll be the last to leave. All right. As you guys continue yourselves along the beach, you get to the edge finally, where the um, where the beach sort of finally um, gives way. The beach itself sort of continues, but you can see the looming walls of Sutterham um, up ahead. Um, you can also see that um, up ahead there is a group like right here. Uh, for those that are on the map, like two two squares ahead of you guys, you can see there is some sort of a crowd gathered. Um, all of them are wearing clothes um, very similar to... Uh, um... Oop, hang on a second. Where am I? I lost my map. Uh, uh, yes. So here you can see that there are like right... So let me... Put on the map again for those that didn't see. Um, oh my gosh. Can't even figure out which map I'm looking at. There we go. Yeah, like right here as you guys approach, you can see there are like several dozen uh, what appear to be um, slaves or at least were slaves based on the clothing. They're very similarly dressed to what you guys are. All loose color or loose garb, um, torn to shreds and whatnot. You can see that they are in the process of <laughs> impaling their former masters. You can see several of them are like putting stakes out. Um, uh, uh, they're sort of, I should say, there's several off to the side sort of carving stakes out of what used to be logs, and several struggling overseers and guardsmen are being held, each one pinned underneath them by several ex slaves. And you watch as suddenly one of the slaves finishes his stake and he hands it to one of his compadres who runs over and literally impales the slaver guard or overseer or whoever he was. And the crowd just Woo! gives off a, um, a cheer. Um, yeah, so that's kind of uh, and then you can see, of course, the docks. You can see there's a couple boats on there and you can see people moving toward the docks as as well um i say we get a boat <laughs> yeah here uh Maybe. dan am i inclined to stop anything or am i okay with that you you have to tell me you are a paladin you are a virtuous and righteous individual and if Do you I think, think it's that it's a, you think it's uh it's okay for for people to impale these guys who might have been bad or they could have just been doing their jobs for pay or that's up to you to decide well obviously we know that they were slaves right yep okay so I would think that the paladin would think that these are affairs of the land and they're they're serving justice probably not the way I would serve it uh, mine would be beheading or jail time but Maybe we right. could convince these guys to come with us and they can help us take a boat and get out of here. It's a good I, idea. I'm just going to compel to lay... I, I mean, if it's justifiable, I'm going to let leave it. But if I think I need to interact, I... I mean, I'm asking you because I don't know how brutal it is. I mean, I don't know how... If it's like they're doing it with evil. I'm going to detect evil, I guess, is what I would do. Okay. So yeah, you're not detecting any evil at all in this area. All right, people, move along. <laughs> Who, are you saying that to the slaves? Along. Yeah. Oh, you say, you saying that to your friends or to the slaves? Um, that's my mentality. Of that, you know, if I'm not detecting <laughs> evil and and things are, it's and I know the situation of slaving and they're they're justifying it because they're probably abused by their slave masters and. I'm 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 okay with the natural causes of righteousness and justification. 
Barris looks to you and, and, and says, Tritherian smiles upon this liberation. <laughs> I smile upon getting from here and getting out of here. <laughs> yes. Um, if, if one of them comes close enough, I'm going to ask him, hey, grab your guys and come with us. We're going to steal a boat and get the hell out of here. We're going to borrow. <laughs> yeah, um, as you guys continue borrow. to move, Varys, as you continue to move, suddenly you hear um, a shouting voice coming to you from um, uh, right at the beginning of the dock area where you're at, coming from this these buildings, Varys, like right over here off to your left as you head toward the docks. Um, uh, and like I said, this is the beginning of the docked area, and, and to the left, or to the west, I should say, you can see the rattletrap houses of Scum Slum, as they called it. Um, uh, that's what they call sort of the outside of Sutterham or the, the slum. So they call it the slums or the scum slum. Um, it's beginning to go up in flames, um, as s some, uh, obviously either the slaves or somebody had begun to set fire to this, as well as hot bits of ash are floating down from the exploding volcano. While it's not erupting a lot, it is sending the occasional shot of of stuff into the air and as the embers sort of land in this area they begin to set some of these buildings on fire um northeast <laughs> yeah northeast is the first dock um but you can see um there is only one small galley emblazoned with the finned dragon suddenly without warning um uh, an individual wearing slave lord um attire comes running toward you um, uh, and he's sort of shouting in your direction and he's sort of running and, and sort of waving his hands and whatnot. I mean, my slay and say stop or I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> he sort of, he sort of stops. Give me, everybody give me please an intelligence check. Just roll a D20 and compare it against your intelligence. I made that. I made mine. Oh no, you I want to roll higher or lower? You want to low below your your intelligence. Yeah, um, I mean, no. <laughs> nice. So let's see, Deglin, what's your intelligence? No, I, I, I didn't make it. All right, so Deglin did not. Varus, you, Ronnie, what's your intelligence? I didn't make it. Ronnie didn't make it. Varus obviously didn't make it. Zadkiel, you guys recognize this individual running up wearing this slave lord's attire. The first thing you actually catch is that. The attire he's wearing um, isn't uh, doesn't fit him very well. It looks like it's sort of maybe like somebody grabbed clothing and threw it on, um, <laughs> but it doesn't look like it fit him. Um, the, the second thing you see is coming from um, a little farther up the towards Sutterham, coming out of the buildings, you see an elf sort of moving in your direction. He's walking with a quick, very quickly with a staff of some kind. Um, and he's got a big old floppy hat on his head, but he has a distinct indications of being an elf. And as this individual, this first individual wearing the slave Lord's clothes comes up, you recognize him as the beggar uh, that you guys uh, saw when you first came in the Sutterham. Well, as he runs up, he goes, my friends, I cannot believe you are alive. This yeah. is a great day. This praise to Trithurian that you are alive. Quickly, as he hands you several scrolls. Um, those scrolls, first of all, um, you realize uh, four of them, or I should say, one of the scrolls has seven spells on it. It has three or four, sorry, it has four spells on it. It has a, a cure serious wounds as well as three cure light wounds. Oh, cool. And then he hands you a magic user scroll that has several spells on it. But since nobody has read magic, I'm not going to tell you what they are. Well, I'm going to tell you what they Wait are. A but, hmm? I have not. I have no ability to read. Okay. All right. You can quickly. He tells you. He he just tells you on this scroll, there is spells for the wizards. If you can get the components for it, there is a sleep spell. There is invisibility. There is strength. Dispel magic. And a whole right, person right. spell. All right. I'm trying. Yeah, I know. You type slow. I got you. You're I'm old like me. Fast, actually. I got I the. This is me. One. This is me typing. I'm a software developer and I still like tick, 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 tick with two yeah. fingers. All right. So sleep and yeah. visibility. Strength. Strength. Dispel magic. Okay. 
and hold person. Do we do we still have the scrolls from the initial? Yes, yeah, you I have those. I have. Yeah. Did you write down what they were? You didn't tell me what they were. Okay, all right. So let me let me go back and get those and tell you what those were. Um, the uh, the uh, the newly arrived human guy in the slave lord attire also tosses you a crystal prism. Isn't that what Dread was needing to, yep. in order to read magic? Yep. So, so <laughs> here here are the spells on the scrolls you guys got when you first arrived. Audible Glamour. Dancing Lights. Wall of Fog. Nice. Invisibility. Ooh. That, was, that was the first scroll. The second scroll had Spider Climb, Feign Death, and Dig. And... Mm-hmm. Yep. The last one was Affect Normal Fires, Light, Jump, <laughs> And read magic. And I kind of I screwed you guys over on that one. That by the way, I apologize. Yeah. On that one, the read magic spell was a is a. If I would have done it correctly, it was a permanent spell that the magic user could have read. He doesn't need the the he would have need, did not need the prism, and he could have cast the read magic, and he would have been able to read what all the spells were. Yeah. But I uh, I screwed that up because I didn't read the fine print of the scroll so but that's okay now you guys got a whole bunch of spells um and again this second individual um moves up and um uh, this individual this um th- he introduces himself as philip because uh, I, I am philip i i am so glad to see you and, and he sort of turns and he his his eyes sort of go up he goes mythendar what, what what are you doing here oh, i'm working for the church of Tritheron. I was assigned to watch the headquarters of the slavers. Yes, I, you know, I, I know this, but what are you doing here? Uh, well, heading to escape the island. Do you know this guy? Yes, he yeah, is. Yeah, we talked we talk before. Yes, he, oh. is, he is one of my contacts with the with the, uh, with the the church. The, they, right. they, they send people in and out, and we communicate. Are you the band of adventurers that were hired to uh, stage a covert assault on the slave lords? Uh, we were. What's left of us? <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we've been uh, millions of way off this island. And it'd be really great if we had some gear, too. So, hey, my friends, I, 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 must tell, I must tell you this. Um, as they were leaving, I believe that your gear is with the slave lords uh, on their ship right now. Yeah, Where, right. Where's their ship? As he sort of turns toward the docks and points toward that very shiny ship that is moored to the furthest dock it is over uh, let me double check on the map just because uh, I also saw uh, Stallman, Stallman Klim and uh, Fetla was fleeing the compound also with a group of soldiers were escorting them were they heading yes. towards the ship? Towards the, yeah towards the docks we, yeah. we better hurry we better get there first then they had a they had a cart that uh, had your had, looked like some armor and clothing might belong to you. Son of a! All right, yeah. those spells, you mages, got to look at those and figure out. Uh, I'm playing. Yeah, <laughs> there's well, one there, I need it. there was an invisibility spell, so maybe there's we can put two, that on actually. the thief. There's two actually. Okay, so put that on the thief. Have him get up there and start getting our gear, and, and maybe use spider climb too. I guess. Maybe crawl underneath the dock so that they don't see him coming. So. Or if you damage the ship and they can't leave. That's true. And then, then we can use our our boat if we can get our gear back and get off this island. With my spear and my stumps, I'm ready to get my gear. <laughs> <laughs> see, Wall of Fog would be great to hide our. And yeah. Then, uh, and, well, I can attack from the 
water and launch myself up and grab a hold of one of them monsters. Why don't we see if we can get the uh, the slaves who are wreaking havoc up there to uh, help us out? Yeah, yeah some, mm -hmm. some crowdsourcing. Yeah, can I use my charisma to recruit some of them? Um, yeah, you could go up and try if you like. I go here, he, here. He. As you Stop get up your there, revolt. as you get up there, and who are you to tell us? They have we been slaves for years. It's our turn now. <laughs> you we can are the do reason it. the masters are leaving. You can hear in the background some little dude going. <laughs> So go ahead and uh, they they after killing one of the uh, the guards or or henchmen or whatever you want to call them, they sort of stop for a second to kind of look at you and they see you're in ragtag clothes and like, who are you and why should we listen to you? We already killed two of those slave lords and now we're going after the rest and their ship to get off this freaking island. So if you want to live, you want to come with them. They look they at you. They they sort of look at you and they're like, "You killed the slave lords in your underwear." Well, they are on that ship over there, and I, obviously you don't know. And I point over toward the lava. You guys are going to die from the lava. So if you want to stay here and be consumed by the lava, that's your right. But if you want to live and smell freedom. Follow us to finish what we started. And I point at the boat. That is so, so persuasive. Man, I like it. That is very, very persuasive. I cannot believe. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at Lando's picture from an hour ago with the cat with the <laughs> laser eyes. I'm sorry. It yeah. just, caught, just caught my attention. Sorry. They're like squirrel. Don't ever interrupt the DM in the middle of his game. Um, okay, so... Uh, let's see. What is your? Let's take a look at Zadkiel. His charisma is seventeen. Um, what is a? It's a percentage chance for friendlies. Let's. Uh, what is your percentage added on there? Uh, I think it's reaction adjustment. Yeah, your reaction adjustment. Plus thirty-five percent. All right, I need you to roll a D100 for me. And it says up to 10 guys or something. Yeah, I want you to roll a D100 for me and add plus 35 to it. Okay, do I want a high number or a low number? Uh, I don't know. I forget. Just go ahead and roll it. Okay. You want the right number. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll take my chances with the guys without their underwear as they as he reaches over and he stabs another one of the, the guards through the chest with a stake. The guard yells and cries. The other ones are crying. You have to stop him. You have to make him stop. I was just doing my job. What was I got a family to feed? I got like four kids. I, I didn't hear him though, right? No, no, but you hear them. Well, yeah, you hear them all crying and stuff like that. But the slaves and stuff are all frothing at the mouth as they completely ignore anything that Zadkiel has to say. It's kind of like they pause for a second. They listen to what he has to say and they're like, yeah, to hell with that. And they go back to beating down the uh, uh, beating down the. Uh, um the last of the uh, the guards and whatnot. And you can see people are still sort of flooding um, uh, out of the uh, out of Sutterham down into Scum Slum. Um, and Varys, you actually... Yeah, thanks for drawing the boat for me. I appreciate it, y'all. Varys, <laughs> you actually notice that there's, there's a crowd of people sort of gathered toward the middle docks, but it's not... They're not going all the way down the docks. It's obviously there's something down there barring them from going to the boat that is anchored off there. Um, I need, uh, if you could okay. be so kind, uh, uh, Ronnie Noblite, as to roll me a D20 compared to your crocodile constitution score. If the crocodile doesn't have its own con store, then you just use your con score.
Okay. I made it, DM. You feel the tremblings, and it's getting very un uncomfortable as the water is beginning to get warm and frothy and stuff. And it is, uh, n while crocodiles are, are okay with, like, fresh water and stuff, but this is a very, you are very um, susceptible to the, the, the vibrations coming through the water as it sort of rocks your internal, internal organs with the constant rumbling, and the water is beginning to heat up. You know that... Uh, it's probably going to start affecting you soon, um, although not just this minute. You you seem to be okay with it. All right. Well, DM, while these guys continue to contemplate life, I'm going to launch myself up onto the deck, and I'll just sunbathe for a moment, plotting okay. my course of attack against that. Can I see any? Yes, like, you can see clearing? movement. Yeah, so down at the end of the dock, this dock here, um, yeah. you can see that there is movement down the dock. Of Looks like they're loading the ship, but there's also a small contingent of soldiers led by what looks to be a rather sizable ogre in the middle of that dock. You could see easily um, um, a dozen or so soldiers along with the ogre, not to mention the, the slave lords are probably on the vessel already. I think Varus is going to try one last attempt to rouse some of the slaves as well. Um, okay. He, he he pales in comparison to the uh, the paladin, but but he's gonna he's gonna raise his meager spear, and uh, he's gonna call out and and explain you know that he is a liberator from the Church of Trithirion and uh, and he is uh, he is here to help get everyone off of this island and. One of the few boats that's left is over there where the slave lords themselves are taking taking off. And we need to liberate all of them and destroy them and get ourselves, save ourselves from this island. Uh, and I'm going to walk over to Barris and touch him and hit him with a strength spell and see if he gets a little more beefier so he can impress <laughs> him a little bit better. Uh, it doesn't necessarily get him beefier, but... Um, oh, he gets a so, seven. Uh, yeah, Barris, you got... Plus seven to your strength for seven hours. Oh, I flex. Now, now that said, what is your current strength? Uh, 13. 13. So you now have an, let's see, it'll take you up to 18. So that's five. So you got 1820 is now your current strength. Okay. Which is plus one to hit, plus three to damage. Yep. Thank you. If you would have rolled to eight, you would have had that just a little bit extra. It took you over that twenty-five. No, it's 1850 where is the first one, right? Or it's 1825. No, it's, I think it's 1850. Yeah, that's what I thought. For, so, yeah, mm -hmm. you got him with 50. But yeah, okay. Just know that if the Zadkiel gets zapped with that, he gets a good roll. He'll have a strength of 19. And I'm going to walk over to him and give him that. All right. But boom Oh, the same yeah. number? No. no. No, your st yours is That's, your strength is now a nineteen twenty. I don't know what the plus to hit damage for nineteen. Nine, yeah, just a, it's a, yeah, it's just gonna be nineteen. So you don't get any additional oh, okay. for percent for percentage. So it's just a nineteen. <laughs> so we pump fists and then but turn I mean, to his, the slaves. His, I don't know what it's to hit to damage it because it's off the chart. I think it's plus two plus it's three and seven. It's a three yeah. seven. Yeah, it's a three seven. Three seven. So yeah, he looks a little bit beefier now. Yep. Slave lords, <laughs> we are here to yeah, pump yeah, you yeah. up. Hey, uh, uh, DM, what did I need a percentage-wise to, to, to? No, so no, ninety-three yeah. percent. No, so basically, um, yours is eighteen. What? No, no, I meant what, like your, the what, persuasion. I, oh, 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 oh! No, um, oh, I, I gave. I, yeah, I gave him a forty percent chance. Well, actually, a fifty percent chance um, for you. So actually, that that ninety-three, it should have been. Actually, let's see. Because uh, I have like, yeah. if it gives me thirty five percent plus, I, then if I need yeah. to roll lower, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that's true. Um, what? Well, let's see. You rolled a ninety. Ninety three. I probably did that backwards. So hang on. Let's see. Ninety three. On second uh, thought, we won't so stand this. You rolled fifty eight. <laughs> yeah. So I am going to first. I want to uh, give me a percentage roll, please, um, Barris. Uh, you mean me? 
Yep. No, Paris I mean, with a B. Uh, um, so combined, uh, the combined, both of you sort of sweet talking, you managed to encourage a few of the slaves to sort of give up. And you see about a dozen of them sort of rally around you saying, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, screw that, I'm going to finish here. We'll get you later. These guys are going to pay for what they did to me and my wife and my kids. But you get about a dozen of them or so that sort of break ranks and join you guys as you head back toward the docks or wherever it is you're going to go. Yeah, head up towards the docks, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, let's go uh, try and get some here. All right. Like, especially over here. Yep. <laughs> Can the crocodile speak turtle? Maybe have the turtle help him stop the boat. <laughs> Uh, I only speak land turtle. Uh, so um, as you guys approach, you can see tied up um, on the uh, the dock. Actually, it's it's the it should be over here. Sorry, I don't know why I had it on this one, but it's actually at the end of this dock down here. Um, it's like right there. Like not quite to the circle of the thing. As you guys move in, you can see um, that it's being readied for immediate departure. Um, probably a dozen or so um, ex-slaves are right here at the little curved area, um, but they're very hesitant to go any further because they, you can see that there's this massive ogre wearing banded mail, um, and he's sort of walking back and forth on the dock with this huge two-hand sword, you can see that he's got a couple of lieutenants with him, uh, other soldiers um, wearing uh, armor as well. In addition to that, there's probably a dozen or so armed workers loading the uh, loading the boat um, as you guys uh, arrive. Oh man, uh, I don't want to do this, but it's not my kill, you gotta. I'm going. I'm gonna charge him. Hang on a second. I don't know. Yeah, oh. I lost the map. Yep. DM. Oh, no, you didn't. I just because I haven't put your characters on the map yet, though. So. B. Hey, looks like Zedkill got a nat twenty, redeem. Oh yeah. Oh. Cardman. Oh, I did. Wait, Cardman. Card man. Man. All right, hold on. All right, let's stop just for a second. Um, as. Um, so Zadkiel has a nat 20. We, somebody cheered 1500 bits earlier. So that means everybody. So that means there's 15 plus ones that need to go around. So here's what we have currently. We have Barris and I need to hang on. I need to add Mithrinder on here. All right. So currently Barris has a plus one. Deglin has a plus two. Mithindar has nothing, obviously. Ronnie has a plus one. Uh, who's moving down the map and why? Oh, that's Ronnie putting oh. his crocodile in the water. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, Mithindar has none. Ronnie has a plus one. Varys has a plus one. Zadkiel has a plus two. So we have 1,500 bits that were cheered. That means 15 plus ones that need to go around. Do you want me to just to give let's do this we could give everybody those that have a plus one make it a plus two right and that'll leave us 1200 so but i'm gonna let you guys decide who gets what um let's see let's do ronnie there's a plus two Varys is a plus two and then i take all, two more hang on yeah if we're all at two already then divide 1200 by two that would be uh, each one of us would get. Yep, you each get two more. Two more. So we yep. all got plus two. You got a plus four. So here's yeah, what here's four. what the to yeah here's what the total is now, except for Mythendar. Mythendar got stuck with a plus two. So Varus. So first of all, what I did is I bumped everybody up. I bumped everybody up from plus one to plus two that didn't already have a plus two. So that took off three of them. So fifteen hundred minus three hundred is twelve hundred. That then leaves plus two for everybody. So I bumped everybody with a plus two, went to plus four, and Mythendar is the only one without anything, so he's now at a plus two. 
The way these work is you can use any number that you want up to the plus four. So if you only want if you only want to use plus one, you can just use plus one of that and I'll deduct it down to a plus three. Does that make sense? Yeah, and is that before using the roll or oh I rolled and I need to add a plus. No, that's it. You can decide whether you want before or after. It's up to you to decide uh, if or when you want to use it. If we save it, does it collect interest? No. <laughs> No, the highest you can have is a plus five, but you can have multiple plus fives, right? But you can only use up to a plus five on any one roll. So you can't get like, oh, I'm going to save these up, but I got plus 100. I got plus 100 on this roll. No, it doesn't happen. Is it to, to hit or damage? Or um, oh, it's no, it's only for to hit. Um, um, yeah. Or I will say that if it's like, if there's some reason you have to roll a high number on something, right? But it's not for, it's not additional damage or anything. It's only for it to hit. Or like a, an ability check, like a, oh, roll a check versus, but I don't know why you want to do a plus one. If you have to roll low, you're right, you don't want to do that anyway. So um, I can't really think off the top of my head in one e any reason why you'd want to have anything other than your to hit roll with that. But um, if it comes up where you need to add a bonus number to it to bump it over the top or something, then you can use it for that too. But it, bottom line is it cannot be used for damage. So that anyway. Kill? That kill feels like since he got the that buff or whatever that spell on him, and he's yep. noticed he got significantly stronger. Oh, by right. the way, he's gonna need another loincloth. Now. But, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, all right. You're such um, a knucklehead. <laughs> okay, uh, he he. I hate to do this, but because of what he's seeing and everything we've been through, he's inclined to lead this to charge to. And he doesn't know if anybody's gonna follow or not, but he just like. Well, hold up. Let's do some some spells and give ourselves a fight. And we got to put that wall of fog up at least. Yeah, I, say send, I said I say we cast invisibility on Varus and have him sneak aboard and yeah, try to get and, our gear for us. Well, if you can give me that insurance horn and pass down the owner, and then we can. That would know, help too. And then we can just charge the damn boat, all of us. I mean, if we had an alligator, they have a pretty bad bite, so maybe they could take a foot off of the ogre. I was gonna try to knock him in the water, so but that's me. They got armor on, so. Well, that's why if he gave me the the short sword, turned me invisible, started distraction or something, and I can sneak up on the ogre and mess him. I think the the pal <laughs> or. Yeah, is it the paladin that's going to charge in? That's probably yeah. going to be uh, distraction enough. Yeah. But, yeah. It's just I can do more damage if I had the short sword. This, the sword the, short, short, that the is... spear that I can't use. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, if I hit him and he's able to fall in the water, you're going to have to stab him in the water. Oh, well, I don't think he's going to fall in the water. It's not a spring bay. Damn, 19 pretty strong that's yeah, true well, yeah well. stronger than an ogre mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. still the, like the dancing <laughs> lights and or the wall of fog or something would be good the wall of fog i don't think the dancing uh, lights are going to do much good right now <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm I'm the wall of fog will 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 blind us as well yeah how, how many slave uh, comrades do we have who are going to so fight? So they, I'm you had about a dozen, you, 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 dos, you had about a dozen of them come with you guys, but as soon as you got where the group of the other ones were gathered, you noticed that your slave friends sort of hung back with like those 20 or so. Man. And all these guys on the bridge are, are baddies. Yeah, that's not it's not a bridge, but yeah, it's a dock, but yeah. Yeah, the dock, yeah. yeah. Oh, the boat's still tied up, so Yeah, it is. Place. Maybe I don't have to charge. I thought it was like get ready to sell off. <laughs> now it doesn't appear if you like you guys have been uh noticed. Um looks as far as what you guys look like, it's more like you're sort of with this gaggle of slaves. You hear shouts coming from the soldiers. Stand your man. First one to approach dies. And it's sort of the rest of them. All these slaves. I turn sort to of our power. slave comrades and say, we'll be the first to go, but all of you follow us. 
We must <laughs> overwhelm them. Yeah, yeah. Go get them. We're right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the plan? Well, let me ask the DM a question. If, if Now I know if I do fireball and I do it centered high enough so it goes from their waist up, I'm not burning the docks or the ship. Oh, I can see what you're saying. About 10 foot in the air. Yeah. Yeah. So it's higher up in the air. So it's not yep, burning I the would, dock or I catching would. the boat on fire. So unfortunately, there's there's a rule about um, if you actually read fireball, mm -hmm. it, it actually has to hit something. You can't just pick a point in air. You actually have to, it actually has to hit a spot, like a solid item. So I was actually, and to be honest, I never realized that until, let me read it through you. And maybe okay. maybe I'm reading it incorrectly, but I want to read it just so people can see because I thought it was interesting. That is interesting. Do we it's have a thief maybe who's good at dexterous things who could throw yeah. a rock, <laughs> a, a coin? Yeah. I mean, um, you can just set it on the owner. Yeah, but yeah, it might but burn I, the I boat wanna, down. I don't want to burn the dock and the ship unless you want to have your stuff sink to the bottom. <laughs> All right, so it says, A fireball is an explosive burst of flame which detonates with a low roar and delivers damage proportionate to the level of the magic user who cast it, yada, yada, yada. Uh, magic fireball wands, burst does not expend. Uh, where is it at? Um, a streak flashes from the pointing digit, and unless it impacts upon a material body prior... Oh, I take it back. Oh, wait, hang oh. on. Okay, yeah, I take it back. So if you were, and, and that's that's where I thought it was interesting, where people could say, oh, I'm going to fireball on the other side of the wall or whatever. You can't. So it has to have line of sight. So you can pick a point in air and detonate it, but if there's anything solid between it and the time that the fireball ignites on its appointed spot, it'll actually ignite wherever it hits. So let's hope a bird doesn't like do like. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> in front yeah. of Randy Johnson. In front, everybody watch Randy Johnson? <laughs> If anybody ever saw that, uh, uh, Randy yeah. Johnson for pitching for the Arizona. Yeah, yeah. they hit the bird and flopped yep, it on the Right field. over home plate, man, and exploded. It was hilarious. Bird goes out with a 98-mile-an-hour fastball. But anyway, so I just thought that was interesting. But, yes, you can't pick a point. You just have to designate that spot where you want it to go, how high up you want it to go, and we'll let it go. Right right about here because it's a 40-foot it's a diameter. Right. 20-foot radius, so this would be the center point. So we can... And high enough, yep. So it'd, point, it'd point be... to the spot uh, where the center is going to be. I know it's not going to be right there. That would be the center. Yep. See, it's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 40. Yeah, so it's a uh, 24... 20 foot radius from the uh, center point. Move it. Steve, as you're not using roll 20, I have a, a pre made fireball token I can give you. Yeah. Okay. There wow. There you go. So that's, that's what it would take from. Uh, uh, let's see. It's still five short this way. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yep. So it would. So if it was centered there, yeah. So it would take pretty much all of these guys, like right there out. Yep. Would take all those guys out right there. Oh, but they get a save for half. Oh yeah, that's true. Okay. All right. So we are. Uh, you didn't have to roll yet. I was going to say we oh. have to go. We have to get into combat, but that's Whoa, okay. Good roll. Six <laughs> nice. I dig it. All right. So we actually know. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Are you guys turning me invisible or anything or not? We should. Yeah. So you can either backstab the ogre or get on board and steal our ship back. Well, you know, once the ogre's dead, then we can all get on board. Because well, <laughs> I ain't your mail a hole and everything. <laughs> or just remember you don't need to you don't need to kill everybody on the ship, you can just disable it. Yeah. And you got the bag of holding. Yeah. Grab and yeah. throw it all in there. Just throw people in there. Yeah, they throw people. They'll die. If you want if you want me to not not do the ocean, just let me know for sure and I'll 
try hitting on the ship then. All right. So that the first thing that you guys do then is cast the fireball. All right. So that is going to be. Uh, I'm just setting up my actions for combat here. All right. So, um, let me put Mift in there. Yep, in. that's a yep right there. But, <gasps> we could pick yeah. up the items as we're rushing. Well, yeah. if they fail their save, technically you're supposed to save for each item, but that could be a hassle. Yeah, yeah, that'll be an each item. Yep. Um, and let's see, the boots will be fine. <laughs> All right. So, Barris, your action is going to be um wait for the fireball to extinguish. Yeah. <laughs> and then and, and then head in and try to spear up some some uh kebabs, I guess. All right. So you got the spear. Deglin. You're going to cast uh, cure light wounds on those poor guys that got fireballed? No. Oh, okay. Just making sure. No. Uh, yeah, I'll be probably, as soon as the fireball is gone, <laughs> then I'll probably be charging the ogre. Okay. Okay. Uh, I also have with a your club? Yep. Okay. What? Is that kill? Um, uh, how heavy is this ogre? Because, <laughs> uh, I can pick up a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. Such as? Well, I mean, at 19, I had to look in the God's book, but in 19, I had, uh, I can weight allowances 4,500. That's, that's 450 pounds. <laughs> you know what you could do, though, is do a Goldberg spear on a guy and knock him off the dock. You or could just pick up 450 pounds. Grab the rope and pull the boat on the shore. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. What are we gonna do? We can... there. What are we gonna do? I want to get this combat over. Oh well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and knock the ogre in the water. Okay, Charge the ogre. Or grapple right. him or whatever. Mythendar, you're casting fireball. That's gonna be your. Mm -hmm. um, Ronnie. DM, I'm gonna be gliding underneath the surface of that water. Yep. And then breaching like a whale and attacking that ogre. Okay. Well, it is Shark Week. Uh, this is true. Uh, and Varus. Well, no one turned me invisible or gave me a better weapon. So I guess I'm going to sneak on the boat in the chaos and try and hit some stuff. I get a sword sword. We got two mages now, so I'll have the other one cast invisibility on Okay. And I yeah. gave him the short sword. Yeah, um, I, I did not bring him. So, oh, darn it. Keep looking at the wrong map. Okay. So you gave me the short sword? That's yeah, I, I said I was going to give it to you because I'm charging and going to try to pick him up and wrestle, and I don't need it. Okay. And oh, Dread, Dread is going to cast right. invisibility on Varus. All right. Then I'll try to sneak him on Morn. Okay. For now, since no. Since two of them were in a fight over, I won't, I won't waste my time on that. Try and get two more here and get some of it. At least get the boat. <laughs> For sure. Or the bag. Bag of holding. I'm probably going to die, but that's okay. All right. So then, <laughs> let us roll. Let us begin our combat. As the party gains the initiative first. So, woof, woof, this huge whooshing roar suddenly as the whole front of the dock erupts in as a massive ball of flame. Um, I am going to say that you did 34 hit points of damage. Yep. Um, yeah, so let's just go. Half 17. Doesn't matter. They, they, don't <laughs> even, they only had like five hit points each. Do the people at the end of the dock run away? <laughs> um, they all scream and go charging like to the to the buildings and that are nearby and stuff, sort of hiding and whatnot. All right, somebody needs to quit moving the map. All right, move you. Oops, damn it. DM mistake. 
Let's go back to, I had the wrong thing selected. Now I can do this. I want to move where people can see. All right. So, Barris, your action, you watch as the fireball sort of goes. Now Barris can do whatever action that he wanted to do. All right. Um, I will uh, not even look back at the uh, slave comrades who are behind us on the beach, and uh, but I'll just yell anyway and be like, See the power! Charge! <laughs> <laughs> and I'll run towards the, uh, the ogre. Uh, they all look at each other like your this. movement. Your movement is 120, so you can get all the way. You can get to the ogre, or you can get to either one of the guards or his lieutenant henchmen that are in front of him. Yeah, I'll try to take one of the guys in the forefront. Um, I guess the one who's on the bottom side of the dock on the okay. water side. Okay, um, using your spear and strength. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to spear him and and hopefully nudge him off into the water. All right, go ahead and move your token, and you get a plus two, additional plus two due to the charging. So go ahead and if you want to move your token down there to the one you want to attack. You got this, Stubby. Yeah. Yep. Um, you hear tukum, 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 tukum. <laughs> All right, and just uh, like I said, roll, and you get your strength to 19, right? Uh, it's 18, 20. 18, 20, that's right. That's right. So you get a plus one. So that's a total of a plus three to hit. Okay, with the minus two for being not proficient, so a plus one. Uh, then a plus two for charging. Ah. Oh wait, no, I take it back. Never mind. That was plus, that was with a charge. I, you're right. So it's a total of a plus one. And okay. he has an armor class of four. Ooh. Okay, so plus two charge. But yep. Okay. Yep, plus two charge, minus two proficiency, and then you get a plus one strength. So you get a bonus, total bonus of plus one. And armor class four, as a seventh level, you need a ten or better to hit him. You see that they are wearing chain, and they have long swords. Ooh, is you hit with a 16. <clears throat> Go ahead and roll thy damage, and you get the... Plus three damage. Nice. Seven. Seven nice. hit points of damage. Uh, Nicely done. As you impale him and the guy's like, mm -hmm. and he sort of takes a step back. He doesn't fall as you rip your um, half-hearted spear back out of him. Nicely done. For the gnarly toes. <laughs> Varus, you are now invisible. Um, if you want, you can try to slink up the rope. Or you can just sort of sneak by them and like right in the middle behind the ogre and all them, um, there is a gangplank right there in the center of the boat. Yeah, I'm going to try and just sneak on by. Okay. Um, I'm going to gangplank. Okay, give me a move silently. You you don't have to do a hide and shadow or anything like that, but give me a move silently to make sure no noise. Nice. As you easily um, move... Got you all the way down there. As you climb on board, you see coming up from down below is the priest. And working toward the back of the boat, um, ready, making ready to get underway, you see the fighter that you guys. So you see both of them <laughs> as you get as you get yourself onto the boat. Um, you don't see your gear. Uh, but these um, these are actually open, and there is ladders going down below. Mm -hmm. So this isn't this isn't like a really good representation of the boat. But um, there's a whole cargo hold below. Apparently, that's where their stuff is at because it's pretty free and clear up here. Um, as both of them came clambering up, I'm actually going to move him, the, the, the fighter, a little closer. They both have appeared to have just climbed out of the hold have the uh with the uh explosion of the fireball on the dock as they appear to be making ready for combat all right well i'm gonna try and go down this hole okay they came out of once okay. they're once one of them like once the priest moves away mm -hmm. i'm gonna try and slip by all right give me give me one more move silent and i would like you to um uh, an additional minus five percent taken off of it um 
because of the noise going on, it sort of masks a little bit of the the sound of anything that might be creaking on the boat or anything, so it gives you a little bit of a bonus. Oh, uh, okay. So, forty percent. Yeah. Yep. So I'm, I'm under my safety. Right. And, uh, yep. As seven. you as you quietly sneak down, as you hear the the two talking. Um, you take whoever comes up on the boat. I will blast them with my spells from here. These pesky in- interlopers will learn their their place in life if I have the last thing that I do, says Stalm and Clem. <laughs> As you get down below, you see that um, there's a lot of um, stuff that has been stored in chests and whatnot down here. In mm-hmm. one chest in particular, looks like you found your gear. Or your your gear being your party's gear. Alright, I'm going to grab as much as I can. Okay, next uh, turn. Next turn you can do that. Especially in my swords. Yep. Be careful, the assassin might be down there too with the hiding. Yeah. Ronnie. Ronnie No Blight. Crocodile right, Dundee. I'm coming up here and then leaping out of the water and taking that ogre out. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and roll. His armor class is two as he is heavily armored. Go ahead and move your token up onto the dock as you clamber out and his eyes sort of as you catch him by surprise as you come blasting out of the water like Sharknado latching onto him. Go ahead Do I get a bonus your... for this? No. I'll get well, you get a plus two for charge. Twenty-one as you hit. Dice are finally going our way. Sucks. Six hit points of damage <laughs> to Ogre. Next hit, 11 misses. How far did I, uh, did I miss on that, DM? Um, you are a seventh level druid? Well, three hit dice crocodile. Oh, I take it back. I keep forgetting that. I, I'm sorry, but you may have hit. His armor class is two. You needed a 14 to hit. I have <laughs> plus four DM. I'm going to use three of those points. Okay. And drop that D12 chop on him. All right. Hang on just a second. Let me do this. So, Ronnie, is you now have plus one left. <laughs> Twelve. Oh. Take that, DM. Twelve more. As you whip him with your tail, catching him off guard as he sort of stumbles, you literally grab him by the arm and just rip, ripping his arm off at the elbow as his blood begins to spurt everywhere. He's roaring in pain. He doesn't go down, but he is severely wounded. Nice Myth. done. Myth, yeah. you've already cast your spell. Zad Keel. After that, that ogre. Okay. Can't move for some reason. Oh, there you have go. to be smarter than a token. Oof, as you rush right between the two, swinging at the ogre, give yourself a plus two, plus your additional strength bonus. Okay. And you're using what as a weapon? I'm charging. I'm going to try and knock him into the water oh got you got you got you so go ahead and roll to hit uh if you hit it's just going to be your strength damage that's why is it my fist one to two or one to four uh no i i don't think fists are one to four i think they're just whatever your strength bonus is but i could be wrong that's fine let's go ahead and we'll just do it with your strength bonus okay. as, as a um, plus 50 or whatever it is now right Ah, it's only seven. <laughs> okay. Fist of Fury. That's it. So go ahead and roll to hit armor class two. Okay, here I go. I hope I didn't jinx myself. A, you need a 12 or better to hit. And as I'm charging, I go, follow me to freedom! Rah! Lords of Light! Here we go. Oh, now I get two attacks? Or does it start over again? Uh... N- no, this is a new combat, so you get just starts uh, over. Eight plus two is ten. 
plus what's your strength? Plus 13. The 13? Oh, I'm going to laugh. You needed a 14 or better. No, I take it back. You needed a 12. You hit. You hit. Roll. You get. Uh, go ahead and roll your d4 plus your 7 extra damage. Adrian! You guys watch as Zadkiel the Righteous goes running down the hall. Freedom! He slams into the ogre who's still dazed from the fact that his arm is missing. Zadkiel latches onto him. Picks him up and body presses him, slams him onto the deck and throws him off the deck as the ogre hits the water, sinking as Zadkiel has snuffed the last bit of life left in that ogre out of its body and it drifts silently to the bottom of the churning lake. Just don't say that. I have my holy avenger going down <laughs> with me. <laughs> yeah, so he was holding on to it as he went down. No. There, went, there it went. It's lost to the bottom of the sea now. Deglin, you're going to go cast uh, Cure Serious Wounds on the Ogre before he's completely dead? Negative. Um, I will be charging the last remaining guy that has not been the one on the right nearest the boat. Okay. Since, since the Ogre's gone. All right. So you get a plus two for your charge. And then attack that guy. You're using my, your makeshift club, right? My makeshift bone club. Okay. A femur bone. Fourteen. Uh, let me double check. His armor class is four, so that should hit. So you hit him for five. He didn't. Did you have the? You didn't have the strength on you, right? Okay, so five hit points of damage to him. Yep. Nice. Um. That leaves him there. Brings us to this guy as he targets, as he screams in pain, as he targets you with his long sword. 14 hits. Hits Deglin for two hit points of damage with his long sword. Okie dokie. And this one targets Barris with his long sword. Three misses Barris with his longsword. Uh, I dodged with my stumps. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. All right. All right. We are back to the top of the order. Let's start all actions over again. So going back to the top, Barris actions same with uh, as before with your spear. Yes, indeed. Deglin. Same. Okay. Mythendar. Uh, I just, if you move, can you do a half move and cast or full move? You're and only, cast? you're only, you're only allowed to move. Well, spellcasters. Um, well, I allow anybody to move ten feet unless they're charging. Then they can move completely. But that's usually only if you're doing a weapon attack, like you're charging, and then you get a bonus to hit. Otherwise, you can only move ten feet and then do whatever your action is, whether it's attack or spell. Um, you know what? I take that back. That's only if you're going to for melee. Yeah, 10 feet. Um, let me think. I'm trying to remember for Matt. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. You can move. I'm going to put you guys at the end of the dock because that's where you should be anyway. Put you guys like here at the end of the docks. Um, you can move um, uh, up to 10 feet and then still do your casting actions or whatever the case may be. Or you can just do like a full move, um, whatever your movement rate is, like 90 or 120 or whatever it is. You can do that, but that would be your action. Yeah, I'll just move. I'll move 10 feet, and then I'll probably cast. Okay. So Mythendur's doing casting a spell. Ronnie? Damn, I'm just going to chomp one of these bad guys. Okay. Varus, you're going to, uh, it's I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, this uh, will take, yeah, sorry, this will take your me, full, go ahead. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. Yep. And then, and then you can tell me. Okay. <laughs> first, first I want to strap on my sword belt. Okay. Because a short sword will keep me invisible. Yep. 
And then I'm going to start, I'm going to grab the bag of holding okay. and shove other stuff in it and get out of here. Okay. <laughs> that will, you can, I will allow you to do that. Um, that's yeah. a lot of gear to, to oh, get not, yeah, in I'm one not, turn. I'm, I'm not trying to hit it all. Right. I'm just trying to hit like a weapon or two and okay. Caitlin's belt in the bag. Okay. Okay. And then take the bag with me and my and my planes. Okay. Back up because okay. I, I will allow him. I'll allow I'll allow that action in order to get that as well as climb out. So the best you could do is get to the top of the ladder to get out of the ladder. That's um, fine. You wouldn't be able to do an attack. Yeah. Once you got I'm out, gonna, but yeah, I'm gonna wait. And, okay. Um, yep. Okay. All right, Zad kill. Yeah, um, I'm going to pick up whatever weapons I see that were left over by that look usable. Yep. By whatever, either the ogre or whoever. Okay. And they all, the ogre had a two-handed sword that you would able to be wheel, would be able to wield now because, well, not only that, you got the strength too. So he has a two-handed sword and the other soldiers all had um, one-handed swords. Long well, if it's still left on the deck, unless it's in the mouth, wherever it's at, if it's available, I'm going to take it and try okay. to... I don't know if it's just taking it as the action or if I can take it and swing it. I'll do that. Okay. Got it. All right. And... Oh, and one more thing. Do we notice the guys on the boat come up or no? Um, You see movement on the boat, but you can't see anything because the deck, the dock is, or the, uh, the gunnel is a little too high for you to see over the top. Okay. Okay, and I think that Dread is going to cast a spell as well. Okay, let us roll for a knit. This time the enemy goes first. Let me, as you guys see, appearing up at the top, the fighter guy that you guys were beating up on when you first met him down in the uh, down in the slave lords um, chambers where you guys first fought them. He's uh, a human, has nice clothing on, has uh, like a fop, floppish hat uh, on his head with a big plume feather, and is is not quite as smiley as he was when you guys were first there last time. Um, uh, he's uh, a little bit more serious looking, so... Yeah, so... Hey, what's going on? what I miss? what I miss? Oh, thanks for the follow, dude. Definitely appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. Don't forget, folks, you can trade your tokens in. The more you interact, the more tokens you get. You could trade tokens in to give our players nat 1s and nat 20s. You could also cheer bits in order to give them additional plus 1s um, all the way up to a plus 5 on their dice rolls. So, yeah, that was kind of a nice... Nice gift tonight that we had to give everybody a, a couple of uh, bonus points to roll with. But anyway, as they go, as he moves and he is just um, holding his or sort of readying his action as this soldier um, targets Deglin, swinging once again with his longsword. Four misses with his longsword. Chump. See, I got the crap dice tonight. Thanks, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. I guess what comes around goes around. I was laughing last week. <laughs> Let me see. Ooh. Oh, I got the wrong guy out. Gosh darn it. Hang on just a second, because I am a knucklehead. Where is he? Let's see, I know I had him. Why is he not on here? Okay. That's he no was, bueno. He was killed in the fighting when you weren't looking. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what yeah. it was. Why is he not on here? He, he caught her. Got to got to heal. Monk boots. <laughs> huh? No, I'm actually, I'm looking. I have all my NPCs, but suddenly the NPC that I'm looking for isn't here. The other guy he is. Bailed. He saw the fireball and he took off. I yeah, fell think overboard. That, that could be it. 
Um, let me see. Okay, I'll just use I'll use this guy. I'm gonna <coughs> I'm gonna use this guy's token, but I'm gonna use the other guy as he uh, moves to cast his spell. Boom. Um, let's see. We can do. He moves up to the side of the. Oops, sorry. He moves up to the side of the boat. And right here, right next to and behind the paladin, you guys watch as this sort of a spectral force um, sort of appears in the shape of a large warhammer, slams down on top of on top of uh, Zadkiel. Now, will my god... Never mind. <laughs> This is really just ir irritating the hell out of me. Unfortunately, it's like I have I have to drop this other token on here. It won't let me attack uh, with this token because he doesn't have any attacks built into him. I don't know what the heck is going on with my setup here, but somehow I lost the guy that I wanted to. Perhaps the power of St. Cuthbert had prevented the... Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what it was. The gods are against you. All right, Give up so, now! No, here we go. <laughs> Don't say that. Now he's going to kill me. <laughs> yep. All right. Take um, me an example. He has to roll. All right. Zed kills armor class is what? Eight. Armor class eight. And he is an 11th level. Probably uh, yeah, he needs a six or better to hit you, so you get hit, and you suffer three hit points of damage. I'm down. Yeah. Two. And, uh, Fifty-five or something like 55 that. Fifty-five hit points. <laughs> yep. You didn't let me finish the statement. Sorry, my bad. That'd have been funny if he did go down. He knocks you unconscious. All right. <laughs> now, <laughs> Barris with a B, you are up. <laughs> I will uh, I'll give this guy a spear to the gut. I have uh, already updated my, my macro, so all the bonus minuses are, are embedded in it. Okay. You probably studied for the surprise test, too. Yeah. Um, as you miss. As you missed. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Varus. You find yourself coming back up to the top. And as you get to the top, you can see the uh, the two individuals, um, the two leader individuals standing sort of toward the top of the... Uh, Backstab them. Backstab them. Oh, he can't oh, yeah. right now. He can't <laughs> yet. <laughs> next, next turn, I have a plan. Okay. Yep. Ronnie No Blight. All right, DM, I'm going to hit this guy right next to me and then roll into the water. Okay. Six. Oh. Oh. Crud. That's not good. No. I'm still uh, rolling into the water, though. Hang on just a second for me, if you would. Uh, um... Ugh, damn it. Give me just a second. I have to get back into the uh, back into the game. I accidentally, I went to click something. I accidentally clicked on a one of my uh, navigation bars, and it took me away from Forge. Ah. I'm like, why I did my music stop? I do that almost every Friday. It's like, why did uh, why did my music stop? I don't get it. Oh, DM, while you were gone, I rolled two twenties. <laughs> appreciate, yeah. appreciate you let appreciate you letting me know with some mistletoe. <laughs> Hang on, guys, I gotta take this. My wife is like agonizingly calling me. Hang on. Okay. 
Station identification uh, break. So would you yep. like me to bash down the clerk? All right. Yes, well, right. definitely. Yeah, that's what I was going to do him. All right. Yep. Uh, <laughs> volume. Oh, there we go. And this is bizarre because it's not. Yeah, it's not playing anything. I'm not hearing any music in my. Uh, We're hearing it. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Something, something happened with uh, when I browsed off of here and I come back in. Now it's it's not playing anything for me, so I don't know. There it goes. Oh, oh dang! There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying I I move it up, but for but for some reason it's not. Uh, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm not even going to worry about it. The hell with it. It's just music. So if you guys can mute it if it gets too loud. If you guys on the stream can hear it, um, cool. If you can't, I apologize. But stupid ass Forge <laughs> reloaded and now it's not playing anything for me. So, Ronnie, you rolled and you missed. Um, Sean, I could assist. I do play recorder. That's okay. I would appreciate it, but no. <laughs> All right. Who's up next? Oh, I hate this. I like hearing the combat music. All right, Myth, you are up. All right, uh, I'm going to move 10 feet forward. Whoa, 500 bits. Hey! <laughs> hey! 500, so that means uh, a plus one for everybody. Actually, hey, hey. not quite. Not quite. There's somebody who's going to be out. So I need you to tell me um, GDTRFB1995. Um, that gives a plus one to five of our players. So I need you to tell me which five players get the plus one. Or would it also be plus five to one person? Or it could be plus five to one person. Yes, that is correct. Totally up to you, but I'm going to let GTR or GDTR let us know before we continue who that cheer is for, because for every 100 bits, as you know, you get a plus one to the player of your choice, up to a maximum of plus five. So we definitely appreciate the uh, the gift. I just need to know who that's for. So just let us know. Um, we'll continue on um, right now um, until uh, uh, to whomever is next in. Well, the thing is, is they don't have to use it now. Um, they can save it to use for another game down the road. Um, but if you can't decide, I'll just have the players roll. Yeah. Yeah. Easier, easier to say <laughs> who doesn't get one. Well, we're talking, do we want to give a plus one to everybody or do we want to give plus five to one person? So that's, that's first, right? So, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, because we got a good bonus earlier, um, we'll give a plus one to everybody and then I'll give a bonus plus one to Mythendar. Oh, that okay. way it's a total of a six and that way everybody gets one. So let me, let me mark that down. So, um, so that means Barris has plus five. Deglin has plus five. Mythendar has plus three. Ronnie has plus two. Ferris has plus five and Zadkiel has plus five. So that is, that is it. All right. Sweet. All right, so players, take note what you've got. So I appreciate that, man. I really do, man. Every little bit helps, and I, I do say it again. Every dime that you guys do to support this stream goes right back into the stream in some way, shape, or form. So we definitely appreciate it. So that being said, Mythendar, it is your turn. What is your action? You moved up 10 feet, and what you are going to do? All uh, right, I moved up 10 feet, and that uh, magical hammer that's just floating around and attacking everybody, I'm yep. going to try to dispel it. And if All he's right. a, le you said he was yeah. 11... He is he was 11, on level, level. 11 level, so it's 43% or less I need. Okay. Ah, no! no! As the spell go goes off, but the spell fails. As nope. you cast a spell, you're like, ah, oh, just get rid of this yeah. and, and save the paladin. Suddenly you just like, it's not going, and you realize that whoever cast that spell is somebody of significant power. Mm-hmm. Zadkiel, you are up. There are two warriors next to you, as well as the individuals that are up at the top of the gangplank. All right, I will attack the guys next to me. Okay. Any particular one? The one to the left Both. of you, one to the right? Oh, I forgot. You got two attacks. You are correct. The one uh, 
near uh, below uh, okay. my token. Okay. Miss. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and well, let's see. Six plus nine. Yeah, you get a plus three, so nine. Yeah, that misses as well. So close, but so far. Deglin. All right, I'm going to try to hit him again. Good dope. <clears throat> yes! Whoa. Natural 20. <laughs> and I got a one on him. <laughs> now that's okay, though. It's, it's one plus six because you, you get the, we do max crit damage. And your strength bonus plus one, right? Well, I don't have a strength bonus without my belt. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have 16 or 15. No. Nope. nope. So you get a one plus six. That's seven hit points of damage. Yep. As you manage to take down. Yay! You take it. You take the you take the the femur bone that you had and you <laughs> slam it on his head and it literally buries itself in his skull. Just, you don't know how you did it, but it's because so, it's rounded at the end. But right there where the joint part is, you just managed to catch him right in the skull, just like you would watch on uh, The Walking Dead. Pierce is in his, in his eyes. A naked moment. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Lucille. <laughs> hey, question. What about oh. all the other guys that were saying, we're right behind you. Where are they at? Uh, I don't no know. No way behind us. Check it out. Oh, man. The fireball. Towards the lava. Yeah. All right. Fireball or lava. They ran away. Yep. Exactly. Uh, first of all, as he is targeting Zadkill with the. Uh, uh, with his spiritual hammer, he is going to or eleventh well, level against armor class eight. That might be. Oh I don't God. think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he needed a six. Damn it! All right, uh, but plus two that, that... <clears throat> hmm? he gets a plus two, does he? No. Nope. However, he is casting his other spell. Wait, was spiritual hammer or spiritual spiritual, spiritual hammer? He he has to maintain a concentration on, or it goes away. Is it? Yep. If, if that's the case, then I stand corrected. I thought it was uh, once you cast it, it would just continue to swing. See, it tells you how I get things like mixed yeah, up between different editions. Five yeah, E. Well, I know I know Five E does it, but I thought it did it in like one or two E two. But that's fine. I got the same spell, so I look. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, right. Five E, I could rest for an hour and get my feet back. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> not necessarily. Uh, not in my Five E game, anyway. All right. So let us go back to. We are at the top of the next round. So let's go ahead, Barris. Actions. I'm gonna keep stabbing this guy. All right, speardy spear, spear. Deglin. I'm going to try to get onto the boat and go after that or, yeah, or help me because Varys hasn't come out yet, so I'm assuming he's in trouble. So okay. I'm try to... All right. So you can sprint to the boat. Mythendar. Oh, I think I'm going to go ahead and do another 10-foot uh, move with another spell. Okay. Ronnie. All right, DM. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn into a giant eagle before I hit the water. Okay. And then start flapping my way down to the right of the dock, come around the backside of the boat and rip off their faces with my claws. Uh, Strafing run. <laughs> what is the movement of a giant eagle? 48. 48? <laughs> Very fast. I like it. All right. So Ronnie now, is going to... I'm going from zero, so maybe it wouldn't, you know... That's probably like already flying. Well, 40 feet, 48 is what it is, man, from takeoff to get go. Your movement's 48, so we'll just make sure we carry 48. That's 480 feet, so we just make sure that we track that. Varus. All right. I am going to draw my magic long sword. Yep. Keep, keep the magic short sword sheen so I stay invisible. Yep. Use the regular short sword and double my stand the first. 
I use double back sword. Well, you know, two, you know, two weapon backstab if I can. If not, I'll just stab him with a long sword. Yeah, um, I will say that if you, if you, or with the long sword, you're gonna say, yeah. I'm gonna say that if you keep your, um, your weapon. Uh, let me think. Uh. Remember, I have my yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I know I'm going to have to, uh, I just, because I can see how this could technically be abused. If you leave the sheet, if you leave the sword in its sheath, even if you attack, you would stay invisible because you haven't like drawn the sword to attack. But I'm going to say that, um, I will allow the, uh, you do it before, so. well, what, no, the, what, not, what, a double? No, no. I mean, you let me pass them. Oh yeah, no, you can definitely backstab, right? Um, what I'm saying is that I'm thinking that, oh, what if he never takes the sword out of the sheath? If he never takes it out, he will never become visible. Well, and then, I would anyway. I wouldn't be invisible all the time because I haven't played him that way. Well, I understand. Really? I'm just saying, I'm just trying to think how potentially yeah. it could be abused if, oh, I backstab him, but I never drew my sword. So technically... You know, the invisibility stays while the, and because I haven't removed it, but I'm just going to say, yeah, I will allow you to backstab with the long sword. Not, I won't allow a double backstab. That's fine. Um, That's fine. But I will say that, I mean, when you stab him, you come visible, you, it, you can automatically become invisible, like at the beginning of your next turn. Yeah. That's fine. So you could become invisible, move however you want, and then backstab again with the invisibility because yeah. you know what I mean? But for the time well, yeah, that you, I, I know they're going to be distracted as well. But yeah, exactly. So, well, doesn't yeah. it act as an invisibility spell? So it, well, it does. Spelled, and then you have to re yeah, react. Yeah, it does. But, but what I'm saying is though, yeah, I hit, I a, hit one a, and hit one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so, so it's like every other turn I can. Yeah. Pass them. If I, if I did that. Okay. All right. Zad kill. Your action? Uh, well, I guess I can see him since, or he can see me. I mean, I guess I can see him now, right? Yes, you can see both of them as they came to the edge of the, the boat. All right, I'm going to go ahead and charge that guy. Okay. I'm and... going to try and throw him in the water. Yep. Or, no, nah, yeah, no, nah, I'm going to hit him with the sword. I'll charge him with the sword. Okay. And Dread is going to move up and cast another spell as well. All right, so now we roll for... Boy, it's so weird not to hear music when I'm playing. And roll initiative. As the party gains initiative, Barris, you are up. All right, I'm going to take another stab at this guy. <clears throat> okay. Might end up having to use some more pluses here. Let's see what happens. He's wounded pretty bad, I think. Yeah, you got him right there. Yeah, I think you uh, got it. A, that hits AC4. That hits AC4, so you hit. Seven points. Seven points of damage. All that strength. Rawr! As you slam into him and you jab your spear, it finally goes through his chainmail plate or chainmail armor in the front, piercing into his chest, out the back, and he drops dead as you rip the spear out of his chest, bringing little bits of bone and muscle with it. <clears throat> your spear for the peasants <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to attack on that for me thank you Zed kill I'm sorry uh, Varus you're up alright um, I get the full backstab bonus get the full backstab bonus and really quick, just so we know off the top of our head, his armor class is zero, but you get a plus four from behind. Yep. <clears throat> so I need a 19 or higher. I may need to use my... Oh, there we go! There we go! I, I... Nice! Uh, all right. That's for taking our equipment. Yeah. yeah. Boom! And any spell that he was about ready to cast you do 14 hit points of damage the 
spiritual weapon, poof, vanishes. And, and she I'm cries like, out. She cries out mm-hmm. in pain. And he cries out and they say, Come on, Morn! And this tainted ship. <laughs> okay. Ronnie No Blight. All right, DM. I'm. 80. Why is it not moving? I don't know. Let me move you. Let me do that. 80. Where do you want to go to next? Okay. That's 150, and I've been gaining elevation. Yep. Negative, Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. (laughs) (laughs) And only that's like half my movement. I've gained elevation. Now, this is up to you, DM. If I am, it says if I am dive bombing, I get to do double damage with my claw attacks and no beats. I I will give that. (laughs) And plus four to hit. And why plus four? Oh, you're I don't know, that's what the book says. <laughs> I guess you're plus four. Okay, <laughs> there we go. The dive bomb. I like it. Go, mm-hmm. Eagle, go. Mm-hmm. We need to knock Ronnie a few more levels down. <laughs> you get an eight. His armor class is negative one. That 18 just rolled off. At 15. Uh, uh, am I within two? Let me hang on a second. Let me see. That's a four hit die monster. Oh, and I get my 1d6 of percent back. Yep. Four hit die. Oh, good point. All right, so four hit die against armor class negative one. It needs a 16 or better to hit. So you roll the 15. So yes, it you are within, uh, uh, within plus two. You can use a plus one to bump your 15 to a 16, and that'll be a hit. I'll use that plus one then, DM. Okay. Here you go. Oh, Are you serious? Snake eyes. Are you serious? <laughs> Two hit points of damage. And I think, DM, I would probably, you know, scoop past him since I'm yep. dive bombing. Yep. And there is no attack of opportunity on that, do you know? Does it say? Well, it doesn't say, but you could probably throw one on there if you yes, want it. Yes, I am. What is the eagle's armor class? Seven. <laughs> but he's also moving at what? Mach two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the eight for you? Oh, I was because this is one X one hit more hit die than the crocodile, so I was adding some gotcha. hit points. All right. He swung by and he missed you anyway. Wait, you said armor class seven? Hang on Armor class seven DM. Let me double check. I don't. I still don't think that. Feathers. I, yeah, I still don't think that hits. Um. Ooh. I bet he hit. He did hit, even with the minus. He needs a five or better to hit you. So oh, as you go, go as you go swinging by. Where is that? The best he could do is knock a tail feather. <laughs> yeah. Let's go here. Oops, not that. As you go swinging by, you suffer five hit points of damage. As he has a sword, he, you sort of, he almost senses it as you swing by, and one of your claws goes raking. And just by instinct, he lashes out with his, um, this cutlass that he's got this sort of ornate cutlass has these leather tassels hanging on and it's got like skull and crossbones sort of engraved on the hill and he swings out catching you um as you fly by as i said doing five hit points of damage as you fly by all right myth and dar all right i will move forward another 10 feet point my okay. finger at the cleric okay and say feel the might of magic Pew, 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 pew. Nice. 16 hit points of damage. Magic missiles, yep. Nice. Boom, 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 boom. Awesome. Very awesome. Zad kill. And now I'm going to charge the cleric. Are you going to attack the cleric as well? Yep. 
Okay, because you're right between both of them. Because he so you know. saw he saw me, right? Because he well, cast the spiritual hammer. Yeah. Okay. So, so shoot, it, that's armor the guy class zero. Armor class okay. zero as you attack, and now you have uh, you grab which which did you grab the long sword, right? Or did you no, grab the uh, it, oh you the ogre it, went overboard with his sword? Sorry. Uh, oh. so, no, his arm got cut off. I thought. Yeah, but not the arm with the blade. Oh. Oh. Well, right, then so you got a long sword. There, long, you have a long sword. Was two-handed. Okay. Sorry, that's a long sword. My bad. It's no problem. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna attack him. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Seventeen. Plus, well, that hits anyway. Go ahead and uh, roll your damage. You get plus seven on that top of that, right? Yes. Ten hit points of damage. Nicely done. As the cleric looks rather battered, especially after taking five <laughs> magic missiles to the face. All right, Deglin. Um... Just a quick question. How long would it take me to actually rip this chain mail off that dead guy and put it on? Um, probably about, I say, five minutes. So that would be like five rounds? No, that's <laughs> like five turns. <laughs> oh, yeah. Donning your armor round. takes a while. Take yeah. Donning armor takes a while. There's an mm -hmm. actual chart out there that somewhere that says, I wouldn't say it's five minutes, but it'd take you... A long time. A, at least a turn, at least, you know, uh, not yeah. a turn, but like a, at least a minute or two to throw it on, like grab the chain uh, shirt or whatever and toss it over you. That would be whatever, you know, your actions yeah. are for the next couple of rounds. Or use the guy as a shield. <laughs> <laughs> Could I, here, that's a, that's a question. Could I pick him up and then charge up the ramp and jump on top of the, the fighter guy? Um, Kill you can. And then I can hand you your milk. You so, can. How yeah. strong are you? Well, he's, he's only got a 12 strength, but the guy was, wasn't was that huge. You can do a fireman's carry and just power slam him. Yeah, on you can. I would say you can pick him up, but you're not going to, you're not really going to do much like jumping and, and whatever and throwing. I mean, you could probably charge up at the body and kind of throw it at him, but, I mean, he sees you coming, you know, if I was yeah. to see you coming, easily avoided. But it's up to you. Whatever you want to do. Totally up to you. Ah, screw it. I'll just run up the ramp and try to jump off the top and maybe do a, you know, bring down the bone hammer on top of his head. Okay. I'm going to try. Can I go here? So yeah, I'm let's say, in. yeah, I would say right there would be enough for you to kind of get at him. Or, or right there. No, because you'd be off the, the thing right then, because it's only five feet wide, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. You'd have to attack him from there, so I'll give you a plus two on your charge. His armor class is negative one. This is not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> for no? Go well at all. Don't forget your bonuses if you need them. <laughs> you got it, you got it, I believe in you. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, 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 11, 11 hit points of damage nicely done <laughs> as you run, you guys watch as, as the as Deglin goes charging up there um, buck naked. Uh, barefoot buck naked. buck naked and then <laughs> leaps leaps onto the gangplank uh, right up at the end of the uh, right where the uh, gangway is and he sort of brings the the uh the bone down slams right across this guy's face as Feetla doesn't know what the hell hit him, wondering there's no way. As <laughs> as you hear as you hear Vera say, I've got your belt. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I need my belt and I need armor. I'm butt well, naked guy. <laughs> let's kill these right. guys and as the as the priest was struck with the fire, uh, the magic missile or whatever, the spell went away. He was the spell that he was preparing um, is unable. It fizzles out, so he is not able to go on his turn. Although the fighter takes a look at the paladin, takes his long sword 
or as cutlass I should say. It stabs himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn it. Yeah, and he rolls around. <laughs> as he suffers as he as he clips Zadkiel for three hit points of damage. Wait, what happened? The fighter behind you stabbed you with his cutlass. The one I just brained with the freaking bone. Did, did it take oh, damn it. Okay. Well, I am going to as he casts as well. Ooh. 19 more hit points of damage as the magic missile pummels into the cleric. Is he dead? Is he dead? <laughs> He's dead! Yeah, no, <laughs> as, no. the cleric, as a cleric drops like a stone. Yes. I don't know why it took him off of uh, combat, but that's okay. I'm accidentally clicking buttons that I don't mean to. All right. As we go, oh, there he is. That's fine. As we go to the top of the order, and the uh... oh, he is defeated. Okay, all right, actions. Like losing my train of thought here. Back to actions, Barris. Action. Uh, do I have any room to get up the the, the gangplank there? No, not yet. Not in, well. I mean, you can move that way, but not until Zadkiel and uh, uh, Deglin are out of the way. Okay, I may just um, I may try to run up there, and if there's no space, um, just maybe try to hurl my spear. I, I don't know. I'll contemplate loosing. Okay. That. Gotcha. Deglin. I'm going to step on board to where, uh, like, just catty corner to uh, and get. You. You'll, there'll be room. I'm moving. Okay. So, yeah, I'll get up on board and clear the game plan. Okay. But that's all, you know, attack or nothing like that? Well, I'm going to go to Varus and see if I can get my belt at least. Okay. All right. Mythendar. Yeah, I'm just going to do a full move down to about right here. Okay. And that's what our that's what uh, Dred's gonna do as well. Ronnie Noblight, or I should say, Eagle in flight. Yeah, DM. I'm gonna do a hard bank and climb, and then turn around and dive bomb him right in the face with my two claws. Why don't you like lay one on him as you go by? Just like everybody hates it when birds poop on them, so I can imagine <laughs> eagle poop. Yeah. Varus actions. I'm gonna hand um Daniel his belt, okay. and then I'm gonna go back invisible. Okay. So I'm basically gonna be non-combatant. Gotcha. Okay. Zad kill. We gotta move and attack this guy. Okay. And we roll for initiative. Yes. Barris, Barris, you're up. All right. I am uh, I'm going to go ahead and move up, and I guess I'm just going to try to hurl my spear. I'm, I'm feeling adrenalized. Okay. Go ahead and move to where you want to go, and then chuck your spear. And again, his armor class is minus one. All right, so I'm going to need a 15 to hit here. Correct. <laughs> Pretty close, pretty close, but not quite. <laughs> as, your spear, right there. as your spear goes flying over, spear goes flying over. It makes him duck. Way <laughs> it yes, was weighted makes him duck. properly. <laughs> yep. Okay, Varys, you reach in and you grab the uh, grab the belt um, for Deglin, immediately shifting into invisibility as. That's too far. As 
actually it's going to go right here. As Dread comes running up, Ronnie Noblight, go ahead and go. All right, DM, I'm going out there and then turning around and coming back. Gotcha. gotcha. Get your plus four on the dive bomb, do you? Oh. <laughs> dive bomb one unsuccessful. Don't don't forget uh, uh Zadkill has a well, net twenty. Yeah, that's uh for Zadkill though, not for the party. Yeah, I was just telling if you. If he wants to take um, a shot at me, DM. Yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, that second one missed as well, right? You needed like a 14 yes. or something? Okay. All right. As he is going to... Oops. Inventory. Twelve. What is, uh, what is your armor class? Seven. I'm Seven? Sure yeah, he hits <laughs> nine hit points of damage to the eagle. Oh, man. All right. Mythendar. Uh, just moving up to about here. Okay. And that's it. Got it. Zadkiel. Okay. I'm going to position myself right there. Don't forget you have a nat 20 on hand if you want to use it. Yes. Uh, I'm going to roll first. Okay. All right. Here we go. And as I swing, I'm going to be like, kiss the sword, say, St. Cuthbert, bless this strike. <laughs> Pretty close to not. No. Bless this one. Yeah! yeah! Oh, nat, yeah! nat 20. <laughs> so I'm going to make the three a natural 20 and that natural okay. 20. All right. There you go. So you got two critical hits. So just roll your oh. first of all. Hell yeah. So that's yeah. 16. Wait, hold on. Hang on. It's it's a die 8 plus your 7 plus another 8. So it's a die 8 plus 15 on both of them. Right. So it's already... It's all right. Uh, die, just roll die 8. 2 die 8 plus 30 if you want to roll that. But isn't it 14 because I get plus 7 on each strike? No, you don't damage. Yeah, so you roll... All right, so your so it should be thirty already. No, well, just that's what I'm saying. Hang on, that's I know that, but I'm saying is, no, seven plus eight. So the you get seven for strength, eight for the crit. So that's fifteen, right? Yes. And then you do that twice. So you're right. That's a minimum of thirty. But then you still have to roll two die eight for the longsword. So two yes. die eight plus thirty. I'll just roll two. All right, so you get 39 hit points of damage against him. Woohoo! As you slam into him. Thank you, community, yeah. for that help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That 39, right? Yep. As you slam into him, it doesn't take him down. Oh. He's, but he, you pierce through his armor, and he looks pissed as he turns to sort of eye you, saying, you are dead. No matter what happens this day, you are going to die. Deglin. Okay, uh, I'm going to move onto the boat. Okay. And put my belt on. Okay. And that's uh, it. That's it. That's all I can do. Yep. Your action would be grabbing your gear and getting your belt on, and next turn you would be able to attack. As I said, he was not happy. And... Whatever happened, I'll be happy. 14, as he hits you, hits eight hit points of damage on his first attack. Second attack, <laughs> another six. A total of 14 hit points of damage to Zadkiel. As we are back to the top of the order, 
actions. Anybody going to change any actions other than I know, Deglin, you are going to be attacking with your club? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Did, did the cleric have a weapon, hand weapon? Um, let me double check. I think he did. Uh, yes, he dropped next to uh, hanging at his side. You see a black ball, uh, black, a black ball mace. Can I grab that and still hit? Yep. Yeah, I'll allow yep. that. That's what I'll do. Okay. I'm going to pass that in the fire. Okay. How, how bad does Fitla look? I mean, it, it um, he looks or... he looks damaged, but um, nowhere <laughs> nowhere worse than any of the rest of y'all do. All right, All right, Ronnie, you said the eagle has landed. Yeah, DM. I'm going to transition back to Ronnie form and okay. cast cure serious wounds on. I thought, wait, do I have whatever my highest cure spell is? Fourth level. Let me look. Okay. Um, Varus, you're backstabbing. Um, Zadkiel, I assume you're just going to attack with the sword. Uh, Mythendar. Uh, yeah. Is he wearing that belt, or is it is the belt off of him now? Who? Uh, Fitla. Fitla that was a, never had a belt. Oh, never had a belt. Just no. no. That was my belt for my belt's giant strength. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try a ray of enfeeblement and okay. uh, just say versus magic. Okay. All right, and then uh, let me see what Dred's got that he can. He doesn't. Um, what were? He could probably use one of the spells that you guys were given. Off the scrolls, yeah. Off the scrolls. Yeah, the new channel. Yeah, let me go look really quick. Give me just a second to double check the loot. Um. Oh, did he save? Old person. Yeah. Uh, or that's about the only thing that would uh that would uh help. He's just gonna throw darts. You know, okay. he's got a couple darts. I'm or gonna... or a sleep spell. No, I take it back, he doesn't have well, sleep I don't think would work against um wouldn't work against an eleventh level. He's pretty high yeah. level. Well, yeah, so he's just he's just gonna like He's going to pause this one. He still doesn't know what to do. I don't want to use any of the scrolls unless it absolutely has to, but. Yeah, All right. I think there's plenty of us that stab him. All right. As Fitla goes first, as once again, he targets. This time he only gets one. I'm waiting for it. So he hits yeah. for three <laughs> hit points of damage. Back to back to the party. All right, Barris. Um, there's no way for me to run. I don't like. I don't know where my equipment's at. Right, it's in the bag right. Of you, yeah, yeah. You don't even know if it's in the bag of holding or where it's at. You just know that you know it's on the boat somewhere. I gotcha. I'm gonna run up and um I'm gonna oh, drop gosh. that bone. I'm gonna be dropping that bone if you wanna pick it up. Yeah, I think the sequence though is you're gonna be I'm gonna be running up while you're kind of swapping. So oh. I, I don't know, DM, I don't know how you play that sort of micromanage. Um, you know, yeah, I won't micromanage it if that's what you want, because it's kind of y'all going and stuff like that. So if you wanna grab the bone club while he's grabbing the mace, totally fine with me. All right. Is there any way I can swing it after I grab it, or just to grab yeah. it? Yeah. No, you grab and swing. That's fine. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna run up the plank, uh, grab the. Uh, he's gonna toss me the bone. Uh, yeah. Let's call it a hammer, and then I'm just gonna do a <laughs> 180 and try to knock it out of the park. Okay. Swing, swing better, better, swing. And what's? Uh, let's see. You need a 15, right? Yep. Slow All motion, right. A plus choreography. <laughs> Wah, 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 wah. Nice, close. So close. It made, him it made him duck. Yep. All right. Varus, go ahead and go. Get your plus four for yeah. your backstab attack. Yeah, well, I'm going to stab him. Well, well, buddy, you got this. I yeah. believe in you. Yeah, I turned him around so you could get him. 
16. Uh, I'm going to use my plus four of my plus five. Okay. You have 20, which is okay. what I need. Okay. And I need plus. 28 plus one. There we go. Nice. Take that. Nice. As he screams in pain, drops slowly to a knee, but he gets right back up, blood profusely pouring out from the wounds and stuff as he whips, sort of trying to flip his cape to try to knock you away. He knows his days are numbered, but he's not giving up. Surrender. Ronnie Noblight, go ahead and cast whichever the high-level cure spell was that you had. Yeah, I got uh, cure serious. Now, DM, I got a question. Sir. I don't think it works for me, but I'm going to throw it out there just in case. I am making a form transition. Do I still get the 10 to 60%? Yes. Oh. So let me roll that first. Thirty percent. Okay. That it? Yep, that's it, DM. All right. Let us now roll for initiative because I know everybody's going to stay the same except for Ronnie. I'll let you decide whenever. I haven't gone yet. You didn't? No. Oh, go ahead and go. I apologize. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Um, I only get one attack this time, though. <laughs> oh, one. Ooh, so close to that and that one. Would have been nice, but nope. Okay, that's it. Mm, okay. And it was a tie initiative, so let's re-roll. As the party gets initiative once again. Oh, wait. No, I take it back. Whoa. Why is he... I handed him my bone, but I never picked up the mace, so I didn't get my attack yet. I don't know why it did that. Um, I'm going back to the top here. Go ahead and go do your attack. Do your attack, Dagon. I don't know why it skipped over you, but it did, so. All right. Target him and try to hit him with, uh, what is it? What kind of mace is it? It is just a regular uh, a footman's mace. Footman's mace. Okay, I, I have a proficient. Yep. yep. That didn't hit. That did not hit. Okay. Now I can go. I don't know what the heck happened on that, that time. All right, Barris, you are up. All right, I'm going to uh, take a swipe. It's nicely done. Nine. Why is it nine, nine points? Is it, uh, is it a D6 or oh, a D4? I, uh, the club is a D4. So, Let me roll that I, four. I was rolling a D6. Was it? Oh. Yeah. Why were you? Oh, don't worry about it. We'll just do two. That's fine. Nine hit points of damage is fine. All right. We'll do that. Crack. I forgot you had that extra strength. As you crack him in the skull, more blood begins to flow, but he still does not fall. Varus. Varus, you will get the, you still get a backstab because he is otherwise engaged with the paladin and others. Yes. Hits oh, with a 22. Yeah. At mm -hmm. long last, the final blow oh. as you drop him mm -hmm. to his knees. As you guys, as you guys successfully, as you stand there, suddenly there's a rock as the boat. I need everybody to roll a 20 sided dice and compare it to your dexterity. Anybody that fails falls to the deck. Oh, I'm fine. I rolled a 20. That's a fail. <laughs> yep, that's a fail. <laughs> Ronnie. Did... I, I failed. <laughs> I know. As everybody, I, I'm so fine. Ronnie, <laughs> Mithrandar, you you like <laughs> collapse, your knees buck underneath you. Ronnie, you fall into the boat just as you're healing yourself. Pow, you guys all fall prone as there's this massive, uh, like a roar sound, 
like an explosion, if you will, like lightning hitting and thunder just exploding next to you guys as the water is like heaving and cascading as you watch. As little bits of flaming molten rock go splashing all over the boat and the dock around you, some of them going right into the boat, piercing through the upper deck, going into the cargo hold below as the boat begins to smoke, as something below begins to catch fire. And that's where we're going to leave it on break until we come back in about 10 minutes. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. I apologize uh, for not uh, keeping the map as up to date as I should have because I keep forgetting every week I do the exact same thing. I don't know why, but it is what it is. But we, uh, this is the time that we normally take our break. Um, we're usually gone about 10, 15 minutes, but tonight I'm going to give it a 10-minute deal because we... Uh, we want to make sure that we get back into the game. So we are going to, like I said, we're going to take that little break. Hopefully uh, you guys will be with us here. Let me see if I can I want to make sure I open this up. Um, but yeah, man, definitely appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with us tonight. We really appreciate all the cheers. Don't forget for every hundred bit cheer, you can give a plus one to the player. They can carry that around in their back pocket for your need. As you can see tonight, um, fortunately, we had enough that uh, our players were able to use them uh, to overcome the slave lords. And of course, if you want to trade in your tokens to give them nat ones and nat twenties as well, um, I think uh, I think the players would definitely appreciate that. But this is our break time. Uh, we will come back to do cleanup operations on uh, Escape from the Dungeon of the Slave Lords A four. And, uh, yeah, man, I hope you guys will hang with us. We'll be back in a few minutes. Appreciate it. Players, I'll be right back.
Dan Oaks. And we are back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to 1E1 Shots. I am Sean, your host, once again, bringing you together with the best that the interwebs has to offer. I appreciate you guys hanging out these last couple of minutes. Normally, we have our break at about 
9.30, but of course our party just took a little longer trying to beat the crap out of the slave lords, but they did manage to do so. Appreciate everybody that's been hanging out with us all night. It's been uh, nothing but nonstop combat <laughs> since we got back, but that's okay. Uh, somewhere in here. There we go. <clears throat> so our party now stands on the Water Dragon, which is the name of the vessel that the Slave Lords um, built. And give me just a second here, because this is really driving me crazy. <clears throat> I don't know why suddenly everything stopped working on me. But I'm going to clear this out, and we're going to go here. And let's see. I have no idea. There we go. I just have to like turn it way up or something to hear anything. Oh, you know what? I'll bet it is. Hang on. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay. I could actually close your ears. Just trying to find a good balance on. As I said before we went to break, the party, having finished taking out the last couple of slave lords, have found their gear stored on the water dragon. As you guys are getting your gear ready, the docks begin to get flooded by sl uh, slaves, a group of slaves, some 30 or 40 of them that were at the end of the docks come rushing down now, seeing as you guys have taken out the slave lords as little bits of rock and many meteorites or meteors get blasted from the core beneath the, uh, beneath the lake, come bursting up through Mount Flame and Blit as it comes crashing down into the lake, causing the boat to rock heavily and slam into the docks. It takes you guys a couple of minutes in order to get your gear sort of situated and find out who's and what's what, but you have to move and you have to get out of here quickly as the slaves begin pouring down the docks, trying to get onto the boat with you. Well, if they know how to sail, they can run up on the boat and get out. And we can use our magic boat and get out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tickets? Tickets? <laughs> yeah. I do have the shipwright secondary skill. I don't know if that will help us or not. That does help you as you guys manage to, as the as all of the, uh, the slaves and whatnot begin to get on board, you find your folding boat and deposit it in the water on the other side of the water dragon, opening it up into its large, it's almost the same size, if not a little large, wider than the, the water dragon. But in the meantime, you guys managed to find a chest full of loot that the slave lords were bringing with them along with your gear. Outstanding. Can we, can, do we have time to search the two bodies as well? No, well, we're taking them. They're on the boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just well, check the uh, bodies out of the boat. <laughs> yeah. you know, okay, there you go. There's there's the, uh, there's the your guys' boat on the other side. So, yeah, we're, that we're being up. said, let's just make this a little bit easier as you guys sail your boat and the slaves begin raising sails as you go through the choppy water, making your way to the other side. It takes you guys probably about a half an hour to get all of the gear, get yourself situated, get on your boat, get as many people as are trying to get on the boat as possibly can as slaves and others begin to pour down. Um, some join you guys on your boat because your boat is built for like 50 people anyway. You guys are able to take um, a bunch of people with you along with the uh, uh, the uh, water dragon as you guys sail across the choppy water. Um, can I, um, as we're getting the slaves on the boat, can I say, can I check out the <laughs> next evil? Kind of like, yep, oh, you're good, you're good, you're good. Yeah, <clears throat> well, you can, but it doesn't appear to be any evil, but um, 
like I said, it takes you guys about a half an hour. And in the meantime, lava begins flowing down the hills into the backside of the city. You can see the walls beginning to crumble under the intense pressure and heat from the lava flows that are coming down, working their way um, down the beaches. You hear the hissing and snapping of, of hot lava hitting the cold water, just causing ex- many explosions of steam and rock go flying everywhere as you guys set sail to make your way across what's that oh i was saying it's time to hit the heck out of here yep as you guys head your way across the lake to the far shore eventually getting yourselves at least in some way shape or form slightly safe and as you look back over your shoulder you see that there are people running into the water um, carrying big logs and, and sticks and of wood with them trying to make shift rafts and paddle their own way across as the boat that you guys the water dragon is following you guys close behind although they do seem to struggle a little bit in the rocky waves eventually they make it across and you guys manage to make your way retrieve your gear retrieve the chest of treasure and head your way through the exit pass not through the dungeons from which you came but through the normal pass through the mountains as you guys make yourself or make yourselves or i should say make your way overland finally fully equipped beaten but not broken bruised but not dead you finally cross over the mountain pass and on the back side to safety where you eventually make your way back to the coast and heading on to your boat leaving the slave lords behind leaving Phil the beggar as well as Dread Delgath leaving them both behind as they go to make a report to the priests of Tritherian who originally hired you. You guys, like I said, finally make your way to shore and begin heading into where it is you're going next. However, in the meantime, you take a little brief respite as you head back across the water, eventually finding yourself in a familiar town, one where this whole slave lord's adventure once began and you find yourself in that little small mining community on the other side (laughs) well where are we supposed to go get our reward for all the yeah the the priests of tritherian the priests of tritherian actually makaro is actually based out of here oh okay so he was I'd love for him to restore my feet. <laughs> yeah, some resting and uh, money spending to do. <laughs> yep. Loot uh, down. <laughs> give me just a second here as we, you guys, find yourselves once again in the. Uh, where'd it go? Hello. I Safe to just... say we all uh, healed up or no? Not yet. Trying to find the priest our, uh, uh, present you with a club foot, <laughs> a peg, peg leg. Yep. Nice. Uh, if the map would ever reload for me, so I can move all the players off there. Give me just a sec. It's going to take a minute. This map. I don't know what it is with this dark shelf map, but it takes forever. It's good on mine. Refresh. Yeah, yeah that's looks, what I'm doing. Looks good. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to refresh to see why it didn't load. There we go. All right. I do so. have some cure lights if you guys need them. Yeah, well, I'm, it's going to take us a week to get back to Dark Shell. I mean, nah, it doesn't really take a week, but it took took a few days because your your magical boat is actually uh, pretty fast. It's pretty yeah. fast, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it clear it killed us in a few days? Yeah, healing up would be great. Give me just a second. I'm going to drag everybody back onto the map. Here we go. As you guys find yourselves in the little town of Dark Shelf. So, post, post excitement of the Slave Lords, you guys managed to um, identify all of the items that you guys found. 
So I want you to be ready. Somebody has to do some typing because first of all, in the treasure box, you find this. A golden brooch encrusted with gems worth 3,000 gold. A platinum ring set with fire opals worth 5,000 gold. Yep. A ceremonial silver dagger of the earth dragon. That is worth 1,100 gold. Got that? Hello? Yeah, that's on there. Yeah, no, I'm just... Monkey's oh. typing the same thing I was, so I gave up. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I just want to make sure we only get it once. Um... You find a scroll that has drawings related to demons of the abyss by some dro artist by the name of Ul Ertz. Errol Ertz. <laughs> no, it's Ul Ertz. Yeah. I'm... Worth 900 gold, which I'm pretty sure Ul Ertz is an anagram for uh -huh. Ul Ertz. <laughs> and you find a box of gems contains 21 moonstones, 50 gold each. I wouldn't... You're putting the... He's running it confusingly. Okay. Let's... 10 pieces of jade at 100 gold. 5 pearls at 100 gold each. 1 black pearl... At 500 gold. A tourmaline gem. 100 gold. An amethyst. 100 gold. A topaz gem. 500 gold. And last but not least. A beautiful green emerald. 1000 gold. Now that was treasure. Here is what you picked up off of the two slave lords. <clears throat> if I could go back and... Did you say 5,000 gold? No. <laughs> 1,000 gold for the emerald. I got some typos, but that's all right. Off of the... Now, in the, in this past, in the past week that you guys have been resting and getting healed up, you have been able to get identified various items. So on the, from the cleric, the mace that you got was a plus two mace. He also has a plus two ring of protection and a ring of spell storing, but it has no spells on it. Is it only for cleric or will it work for mage? Oh, it can work for mages too. It's whatever. It just has an expensive cost to cast the spell into the ring. Off of the fighter, the cutlass is a plus two cutlass. He also was wearing plus two chainmail and sported a plus two shield. Ooh. <laughs> That is the items that you got. Is off it Elven them. Chain? No, it's regular chain. <laughs> that is a treasure. Yeah, Elven Chain would have been nice for me. Um, we have we have all the tre other treasure we had. Right. Found that too, so we have a whole. Yep. Bunch you guys of got a stuff. shit pot of stuff. So, in addition. I'm giving everybody a 2,000 experience point bonus for taking out the slave lords and helping save other slaves on your way out.
Maybe we should change our name from the Gnarly Toe Guild to like the Slave Buster or something like that. <laughs> we can come up with something. The A1 to A3. <laughs> A4. A4. So I, I am mean, going to A-team. need... The A-team. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, that's awesome. I am going to need somebody to go back through the loot um, to sort of add up all of the treasure that you guys got and kind of put it in one cohesive list in a new post on Discord sometime this week so we can figure out experience for treasure. It's there. Oh. I just misspelled it. Well, Nathan, you want to do it or you want me to? Uh, I don't mind either way. Yeah. Okay. Oh, one more so question. I, I, yep. What did we get off of the, the dead paladin? What paladin? Oh, we'll just check it. Yeah. <laughs> as you guys have... <laughs> as you guys have spent this past week resting, recuperating, learning who is who and what's what, getting to know your new companions as your new companions get to know you, as well as Dark Shelf. Dark Shelf is a small mining community that was originally... Um, its miners were actually the night shift was actually the slavers were using slaves to do the mining uh, right under the noses of the the town um, council or and the and the mayor and whatnot. However, um, one hang on a sec. Let me. I gotta fix something. This is kind of irritating me too. So I look at our players. Uh, where did he go? Why is Mithrandar is not part of our players? He was banished. Seriously, <laughs> I swear, he's not under the players list. Where did he go? I don't know. I, I'm on the map. Oh, you know what? Um, I know why. I know why. Okay, I gotta go. So, anyway, let me do... I have to go permission. I have a new... Um, I'm looking at the, the online map, and I... So for those that don't know, I have two different maps up. I've got one that's a viewer map and one is a DM map. The DM map shows all the ins and outs and, and hidden stuff. And then the viewer map is on there so that I could put it on the stream so the people see what the players see. So because I found that some of our players would be watching the, the DM stream and they say, oh, look at all these things. And I just wanted to try to kind of hide that from you guys. But that being said, I have to... Uh, Let's see, I want to go Mithrandar permissions. Mithrandar is an owner and he is an observer. And there he is. Okay, now he shows up on my viewer map. So this is weird. Anyway, um, as you guys have been resting, you've been recuperating and learning who your friends are and whatnot. Zadkiel, you feel ill. You're not sleeping at night. Uh, it's like you don't know what it is you 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 talk to your friends and party you guys look at Zadkiel and it's just sort of he's like um in and out of it if you will right um it's like he he pays attention for a minute and then he just sort of zones out his eyes just sort of stare off into space and that PTSD. lasts for a few days sorry go ahead PTSD yeah i guess <laughs> um that goes on for for a couple of days and then the dreams start. Sad kill you. You wake up and you're in like a cold sweat. You try to remember what it was and you just can't. It's just something It's on the tip of your brain, on the tip of your tongue. You almost feel like you want to say you're screaming when you sit up, but no sounds coming out. When you wake, when you're fully awake, you realize you're just by yourself, just sweating profusely, like soaking through your your blankets in bed. After a few days, the dreams get more intense and you begin to remember there's a, there's something in the wild that's calling you. It's like, it's not like voicing your name and calling, hey, Zadkiel. It's, it's almost like a, an urgent need, this feeling that there's something out there that, that needs you and, and that same thing knows you and it's calling to you and next thing the visions get even worse is 
you can picture there's this deep hidden cavern of some kind that you find yourself walking in you you've got a torch in your hand and you can hear this sort of a a low hum almost like a like a machine sort of cranking in the distance you wake up and the headaches begin and you know that there's just something there and then one night it, it almost all sort of fits together as as you feel like you are being bitten and stung and repeatedly um, assaulted and looking around you can see this it's a similar cave structure it's not the same caves you saw that you were walking torchlit through but it's a different cave there's strange emanating lights almost like electricity sort of dancing back and forth between stalactites and stalagmites and then suddenly you look down and you, you see this creature is probably 10 feet long if it's an inch it's like almost you want to say it's a huge snake but as it sort of turns its head towards you you see the snake has the face of a woman and the fangs of what can only be described as like a vampire its eyes are glowing sort of a purpley red as it sort of smiles at you and it turns and goes back to whatever it was doing its skin looks, its body is shaped like a snake, but its its scales are so fine and so smooth, it looks more like an eel out of water than it does any kind of a snake you have ever seen. But at the end of its tail, you can see the, the cause of your stinging pain as it has this wicked looking hook of a, of a stinger or something on the end of its tail. As it sort of turns towards you, you can see... Um, out uh, in front of you, the ground, there's sort of this chasm and you are on one side of the chasm. You can see there's a rock formation about halfway across the chasm and then the chasm ends where these rock caves begin and you realize that on the other side of those, on the other side of that chasm is you. But you realize, how can I be over there? And then as you look down, you realize that you are not in your body. You are in the body of a massive, muscled, beautifully formed chestnut warhorse. And you realize as you wake up with a start that this noble beast, this beast is a gift from St. Cuthbert himself is in danger and it needs your help and you have a really good idea where it is and where you might find it and that's where we're going to start our next adventure what do we want to do got to get this foot repaired <laughs> yeah leave, leave Daniel for his holy foot Is he is he allowed when he when he does his when he does his quest for his war steed, is he allowed to do it with friends or does it have to be alone? Oh no, he can he can bring you guys along. Okay, I didn't. I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I have no problem. It's his uh, quest, but it's up to you guys if you want to. Was this along. horse? Did it have eight legs? No, did Slate not there. have eight legs. Nice, hey, nice try. <laughs> nice try. Any wings? No, not that you know of. Or Not a ward, you know. maybe. Uh, no. It's a Sorry. nightmare. Did the, <laughs> the priest of Charthurian give us our reward? Yeah, I, I'm okay. sorry. It was, a, it was a thousand gold each, right? I th hmm? thought it was five thousand. No. Thousand, five thousand per head. Yeah, a thousand each. Yeah, five thousand. Uh, yeah, so... We need to add that to loot then. Okay, 5,000 gold added. Well, how do I, what do I do? You know that from where you guys are to the north, there is a range of mountains known as the Aber Owls. The Aber Owls borders the bright desert which is on the west side. The Nat Marsh is on the east side. 
<laughs> you know that deep within those hills are ancient, the ancient country of Sulm, S-U-L-M. The bright desert used to be a fertile land, much like the Nat Marsh, although the Nat Marsh is kind of nasty now with a marshland. But where the bright desert used to be was a very fertile valley. And that valley was ruled by the king of the Somme. Unfortunately, he made a deal with a dark god. And when all was said and done, all that was left was the bright desert. But there are ancient ruins deep within the desert as well as the Abra Al's mountains. And you know that the creature that is calling for you is in that range somewhere. You don't know exactly where, but you have this feeling, this nagging urge that you need to go in that direction and trust that St. Cuthbert will guide you to wherever it is you need to go to find your noble steed, which turns out to be a mule that talks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a noble steed. Yeah. I'm a yeah. noble steam box. <laughs> um, just one more thing about that. Uh, <laughs> the dream with the lady. Do I recognize that lady's face? Because mm -hmm. I do. I have seen a Medusa before. It's not a Medusa. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's a snake creature with a woman's head with a sharp stinger on its tail. Okay, oh, I could, sounds like I a naga. Snakes on its head, I thought you said. Sounds like a naga. Yeah, well, yeah, naga. But that's player knowledge, not character knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Just but you sure can always not. do research. You can yes, always do research. We'll research and... all next campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Paper cut. <laughs> Two hit points. <laughs> First of all, I need everybody to make sure that your hit points are back to your max. And that your dex is back. No, not quite. <laughs> Almost. <clears throat> uh, is that a Paducah the in the middle of the map? In the satchel of the horse is the secret scroll that will repair your foot. Is that what in the middle of the map did you say? <laughs> Paducah, as in K Kentucky. I mean, you can kill Charles and the Prince. See if they can heal you. If you scroll up a bit, it's at the crossroads. Uh, or just past the crossroads there. Oh, yeah, Paducah. Yeah. Paducah. Yep, that was... Um, I want to bet if any of our um, Living Greyhawk folks could come up, somebody, I'll bet, put that Paducah out there during the Living Greyhawk years. This map is based on... or is a cut out of... Anim, um, just sort of a, a slice of Animeyer's full map. <clears throat> and if you haven't seen Animeyer's full map, you're missing out. You need to go see it. Because it's the entire world of Greyhawk zoomable with all the, all the bells and she's sourced it from all the different places and whatnot. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. But anyway, um, let me actually. I also have to go to. Let us go here. Well, Zadkiel, you call it a quest for a horse. I call it a quest for a foot. <laughs> it is now the thirteenth. You can be my footman. Love it. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna walk around like the uh, what was the guy in um, Young Frankenstein? And just drag <laughs> his foot around. <laughs> Igor. Igor. There you go. It is now the fourteenth uh, day of Good Month. For those that care, oh, uh, today's weather overcast with light drizzles. Possible. So Perfect it is druid weather. It has been a few weeks since you guys <clears throat> returned, or a couple weeks at least since you guys returned from the slave lords. The priests of Trithyrian have beseeched you to join their ranks and go fight slavery wherever it may be, but you have had better, better plans. Had your fill of the pomage for now. Time to figure out what we are going to do with our young lives. Is this new 
possible experience arrives in the form of a aid to a some beast the paladin's war horse is calling him I shall call him horse exactly Bob Bob the barbarian tells us call it Jimmy Joe <laughs> Mr. Call Tim Bear. they call me oh, there you go they call me Tim Tim the they horse call me Tim <laughs> so then what is the first stop or what do we what do we want to do now that we know what's up what do we do next in order to try to find Jan's well speed? I'm going to try to convince my companions here that explain to them that I would be grateful if they would accompany me to retrieve this holy mission uh, in order to instill a much better greatness of our, <laughs> of our fellowship. I don't know. Uh, to, uh, you know, whatever I can do. I'm is, there, is there coin involved? Is there what? Are you going to pay me or give me treasure? Sure. Then I'll help you. Barris simply looks at you and says, You assisted me escaping the slave lords and reclaiming my equipment. I feel I owe you a debt. You should talk to the priest about your feet. I look around for a priest. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this bad foot for three weeks. Can somebody <laughs> please fix this goddamn can green? <laughs> well, it won't be getting green because I could cure disease. So, so can I. So, I don't know. It's got to have to be some type of restoration. Shoot. Regeneration, yeah. probably. Yeah, regen. Yeah. But, I, uh, I thank you for those who who will accompany me on this holy task. I must take on. But to be warned, it may cost you your life or uh, should... another foot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we should uh, no. buy some potions and things before we leave. I will ask my church and see what they can provide. Give uh, me a give me a D eight, please, Zad Keel. D eight. Yep. Okay. You get five extra healing potions and five regular healing potions from the church. Thank you, church people. My brothers and sisters. And I'm going to, you know, I'm donating whatever I have of any share of my money is going to that church, obviously, because I can't, I'm not a wealth person. Okay. I don't think I can keep um, gold, I think only for expenses. I think that's what it said or something like that. Yep, you can put stuff away, I think, also in order for uh, um, the future of your uh, building a castle or something like that. Oh, okay. I also tell the group, yeah, and uh, this will help build a stronghold for honorable men like yourselves. Mm. Um, let me look here really quick. We're safe, Hayden. I hire a couple of night ladies for the night watch. <laughs> yeah, so, so, just so you know, a regeneration spell is 15,000 gold. <laughs> Restoration is 10,000 plus 
uh, an additional 10,000 per level of the recipient. Well, actually, that's sorry. That's for spell. That restoration is to uh, to uh, return levels and stuff like that. So we wouldn't need that. Um, I thought there was uh, something besides regenerate. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna say. Well, that cure that. Disease. Well, I'm it's not say, disease. Well, well, yeah, cure disease is. Yeah, sorry. Slime, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, but his foot was already damaged. So I'm going to say um, if you could get somebody to cast three cure, cure critical wounds on you, that'll bring your... Um, no, two. Sorry, two cure criticals, one for each dexterity point lost. Um, and cure criticals are um, 600 gold per casting. All right. Oh. Just need just need to find a priest high enough level to cast it. There is not one here in Dark Shelf. Dark Shelf is a little small mining community. The priest here is only fifth level. All right, I will make note, and uh, next time I find a traveling awesome priest, <laughs> <laughs> or well, we have could, a priest, get head we to Greyhawk. Huh? Yeah, yeah but, but what level is Cure Critical? It's it's much higher than me. <laughs> I think well, Cure Critical, you got to be like twelfth level or something. Yes, we gotta do this. We gotta do the South Park strategy. You gotta go around and kill some boars until we level up. <laughs> there you so go. Then, so then the next question is: Can you buy two cure critical scrolls? The fifth level spell, and I'm I'm only what I got level I gotta be to go to fifth level. I think you gotta be tenth, either ninth or tenth. Fifth level, ninth. Yep, I got a. So I'm already eighth. So just one more level up, and I'll, I'll make it. DM, if there's a community garden or something like that, I would like to go over there and give them a class and definitely plant or uh, cast plant growth on it, and then wander away. Okay, there you go. And I cast poison the... ivy and it grows all <laughs> over the town, and yeah, everybody gets exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> that was kudzu. Damn. Oh, damn. As you guys now manage to heal yourselves, get some healing potions, you know where you want to go. Are we going to remain here in town or are we going to head out and seek our way? Once we get everything settled, yeah, we'll head out. And I guess we'll, are we going to take our boat, guys, or we, are we going to go we, over land? We should divide up the treasure and make see what items... Some of us can use, like, the yeah. improvements. Okay. Uh, make sure they get pop in here. Yeah. And well, so, one, let's go through the uh, the gear we've got. The um, There's pages and, in here. What's that? So, there's pages of treasure. As we started, well, I'm not worried about the treasure. I'm just talking about the, uh, like, the armor and weapons and stuff like that. We can do the well, treasure this week. Well, there's, I mean, they're all over the place. So, That's right here on the, um, put on the Discord here. Yeah, but we started At the bottom uh, of your items. There's only like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven. Well, there's more. There's more if you scroll up. Because we started the slavery thing a while back. So. Oh, okay. Hey, yeah, going forward, it. It might be easier to keep it as a journal entry in the uh, yeah in the foundry environment. Yep. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. So we just start keeping a list of treasure in there. That way, you don't have to go scrolling because people post things besides treasure in those chats. Yeah, that's why I was trying to get people not to do that. But Maybe uh, Google Drive. No, yeah, I just think I think a journal a journal here is fine because, like I said, you can go right to the journal. You yeah. create a journal injury and say treasure from session 43, treasure from session whatever. So and it, from, yeah, so from May 23rd on is when we fought the gnolls on our way to the slavers. Yep. So there's, there's several things. Yep. In there so, that haven't been claimed by anybody. Right. So, I mean, we can definitely do that now, or we can start off on the 
kicking off the other one. It's totally up to you guys what you want to do. You tell me. We're here. Yeah, we're right. Right. Well, there's several items that, that. that were never identified. Yeah, that too. Um, like, there's a fine chainmail magical, fine longsword magical. Uh, uh, well, I know the chainmail and the longsword were plus one, so if you just want to add those. You can edit those and oh yeah, yeah. it won't let me edit it because land up with oh I can oh. I can edit it and oh. so figure out what it is. <laughs> uh, ah. There they are. Okay. So then plus one. It's not Elven Chain by any chance, is it? It is not. No, no, I was looking, and none of the none of the stuff you guys got was like Elven Chain or Mithril uh, or anything like that. Adam, I need Elven Chain, <laughs> but, oh. but oh well. Um, the uh, on the on May twenty third, the Ring of Gold with Arcane Inscriptions. That was a. Um, that's when you guys were with the Knolls. Yeah. That. That was a, a ring of spell storing as well. Mm. Ooh, so I'll have to go back and look what the spells were, though, because those there were spells on that one. Okay. So you were wanting us to go through this whole thing and gather them on one major list, then? Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, and that's. What me and Daniel have done yeah, we only path. need that. We only need the treasure. We don't need anything worth the experience or anything like that. We just need the treasure and whatnot because that's where yeah. we got to go back and figure. Yeah. Um. Polished garnet. Yep. The gem of seeing. You figured that one out. Uh, yeah, that's already got the key and everything. Yeah, I copied and pasted everything from this session that I think uh, you guys had put in Discord. I put it into yeah. the treasure thing. I just want to tell uh, the audience, thank you for all their help. No kidding. On July 4th, the gold ring with fire opals is a ring of fire resistance. Yeah, the fire opals aren't anything for the hellhounds. Uh, the minotaurs um, scale mail was nothing; it was just scale. Mm -hmm. um, the crossbow that it had was actually a small ballista. It, it fires as a small ballista, so but you have to be like super big and strong to, to carry it and stuff. Yeah, how much hmm. battle axe? Yeah, the battle same thing. It's like a two-handed yeah. battle axe. You got to have a strength of like nineteen or greater to to, to wield it. All right. Um, got the plus one chain, plus one longsword. Already got that. Um, got the iron stone. Remember yeah, that? Ronnie. Ronnie, Ronnie's got that. Yeah. Which, by the way, don't forget, Ronnie. If you didn't already, you get an additional plus one to AC and plus one to all your saves. Yeah, with I added it to my AC. Okay. So um, how about the potion and sword on the the black so so black um, uh, well, the black gloves are um, gloves of dexterity. They give you a plus two dexterity. Oh, that'd be great for me. Um, or, or a ranger. Yeah. Um, let's see. The uh, So on July 12th, when you guys fought the uh, slave lords, the assassin's dagger was a dagger of venom. The leather armor is a plus one leather armor. Um, uh, on July on uh, July twelfth. Okay. I don't see my. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. I see. Yeah, the the magic user had a dagger, a cloak, yeah, ball, staff, yep. a ring. Yep. Um. So. Oh, hang on, just a second. Let me go back on these. And let me go back down to their items. 
Uh, no, those are. So, and when you when you get done with that, can you scroll up and look at the items under the gloves? Yeah. Okay. Um. So the assassin, it was a plus one dagger. I'm sorry. Um. Yeah. Sorry. Let me see. Yeah, assassin. Plus one longsword. Plus one dagger. And the plus one leather. Uh, okay. So oh, I, 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 I have to edit that. I'll edit that. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Longsword. Otherwise, I was going to try to get it. Yeah, that's right. right. Plus one. Then just leather, gets armor. Crazy. And then <laughs> the monk only had that. Um, magic user um where is it? yeah it is a dagger plus one cloak plus two staff staff of power with three charges Ants. All right, so I did it on the 12th. I updated it to what they had. Okay. All right, where did you say that I missed? Um, The potion and the sword. Oh, okay. Just a moment under the gloves. And... Yeah, I'm looking to see if I can. Um, where did we find those? Do you remember? Uh, it was a month ago. <laughs> a month. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's what. Yeah, sorry. Um, potion of extra healing. I got you. Yeah, potion of extra healing. Mm -hmm. The the gloves are actually gauntlets of dexterity, not gloves. Sorry. Gauntlets of dexterity, mm -hmm. and the sword. Sword is a plus two long sword. Nice. I think that is it for all that. <clears throat> so you guys, you definitely have a whole bunch of different weapons and stuff that you guys can sort of. Yep. Um, the staff of power probably go to your magic user. Oh yeah. Yep, it's a staff of power with three charges. So. All right. So now that we know what everything is, you guys, anything else that we want to do? Because we still got about 20 minutes. We can start moving in toward the next adventure or we can just not do anything. Totally up to you guys what you want to do. I'd like to take the plus one leather and the uh, glove. Well, no, we can make them gloves of dexterity. We can make them gloves of dexterity. I don't know if I, I don't know if it will really improve my dexterity. I gotta look. Right. Where, so, where's the where's the treasure list now? Because is it kept? It's somewhere in Discord. It's in Discord. In the, in the loot channel. Yeah, there's a one e one shot loot channel in the Discord. Uh huh. Um, that's where everything is put, and we've just been scrolling back over the past few sessions to get them all. Oh. Uh. And what yeah. we're going to do is either Varus or Z or I'm sorry, or Deglin is going to aggregate everything together and put it in one spot. And once it's in one spot, <laughs> um, we'll yeah. I'll yeah, we'll put it in it as a journal entry. Yeah. Um I'm going to create Yeah, so I started entry. the journal entry already. Um uh, you have to make it public though, so no otherwise no one will be able to yeah. see it. Oh, please do that. <laughs> I can't I don't see it. Stand oh, by wait, hang on. Hang on, I'm looking in the wrong one. <laughs> Hang on, I should be able to see it because I was looking in the viewer role, not the my DM role. There's Journal plus the items that yep, are there. The it bag. is. There's the yep. items that are in the bag of holding as well. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I added to it was the stuff that was in Discord for today that had yeah. just been entered. So okay, if you guys perfect. want to keep going with that, it, it hopefully. Yeah, I you thought. Can... I was thinking if every single session we have a journal entry for the treasure. Right. Works for me. So, 
So we instead of calling it treasure, we call it August 1st treasure. And then the next one, you know what I mean? And then once something is given or taken, we take it off the treasure list. Right? And otherwise it's considered to be in the bag of holding. I say, hey, everything's in the bag of holding. So if you were to go up and say, oh, um, if I look at this treasure list and it's all this stuff is on here, that means all this stuff is in the in the bag of holding. As yeah. opposed to, oh, we're going to cash all this in and, okay, I'm taking the ring and I'm taking this and I'm taking whatever. You guys just have to put it onto your character sheets to make sure that it doesn't get lost track of. All right, okay. so Jotlins will only give me one point of history. Right. But they won't give me a 10% bonus to, like, pay pockets. So. Okay. So, yeah, it'll be useful. Okay. So. Got it. So I'll take that and, uh, and uh, plus one another from the assassin. All right, so I am going to take the... Uh, is it on here? Uh, looks like it was already taken off. Oh, you already had. That was from a different session. Never mind. I can't even see the journal. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me. Sorry. There we go. I'm, I'm just. I'm just making notes in the. Um. Uh, in the test one. <laughs> yep. Um. I, I'm probably gonna. I'm gonna take the plus two mace. All right. You guys should all be able to see it now. So I made it, uh, I made everybody an owner of the treasure thing. So that way anybody can really edit it unless you just want one person in charge of adding and removing treasure. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. All right. So who do we want to be in charge of the treasure? Dead silence. <laughs> Treasure is always a problem unless you do it as a group and you go through line by line, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I and say for, the, the for new me, guy. <laughs> yeah. For me, yeah. For me joining last, I guess, uh, you know, I really don't like, I wasn't around for all that other stuff. So I really like, right. well, and I uh, shall be the first. So yeah, right. so in the ring of spell storing in the DMG, there's a clerical ring and a wizard ring, and then you got to figure out what spells are already like stored in it, unless you're gonna let, yep. unless you're gonna play it where you could just put in whatever you want. Well, that's that's how I did it. I just say ring of spell storing, and whoever wants to take it gets those spells, whatever. They, right now, the rings that you guys found that didn't look like it had any spells left on it. So you would have to take it someplace to have the spells cast into it and whatever that costs to have it done, et cetera, et cetera. You, you have to know what, what was in it before. Like you, well, that's fine. I'll find out then. Yeah. And then uh, did we each get 5,000 gold or is that? Uh... No, that was the 5,000 gold was for the party because yeah. it was 1,000 gold per, per person, not you. <laughs> so we'll, yeah, we'll have to figure out either Jacqueline or I will add up all the coins and gems and divide it up. And then cool. we're going to have to go through the items that people don't want to equip and then and, um, either sell those or put them in a bag of holding for use in later. Yeah. Yeah, whatever falls out of the bag under the ground, I guess I'll pick up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from the current list, I mean, I put in Discord the two things I'm most interested in, but I have no idea what you guys had from previous oh, sessions. Yeah, we yeah, have much of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't want much. Just yeah, not you, the first thing. I'll take everything else. Yeah, you shouldn't shouldn't have any problems getting a magic weapon and and or magic armor if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah AC, AC is kind of my issue right now. I've got the magic weapon and everything, magic weapons, but. Uh, I mean, no big deal. I mean, I, we don't have to go through it tonight. I just, I, yep. uh, you know, whatever okay. you guys want to do. And I, I don't mind maintaining the treasure entry going forward, but as far as accumulating all the crap from the past, if you guys want to cut and paste that in here, I can organize it. But yeah. it's up, up to you guys. I've got an updated list of the bag of holding. Uh, so I can put that in here. But we, I do need to go back. 
Yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. Start, start at May 23rd. If you want to go ahead and just do it daily, I'll let you take care of it if you want. Yes. Yeah, start at May 23rd. And going forward, that's all the the loot for this past storyline. Yeah, I just gotta go back and cut and paste one. Yeah, day. just ignore all the SP until uh, August first. And Sean, if you want to maybe create a um, I don't know if you want to create a bag of holding journal entry that's public. Yeah. That way we have a you know we can have a treasure list and a bag of holding list, whatever. Yeah, we could do that. I've I've got a bag of holding list ready. I just gotta put it to where you guys can get. <laughs> yeah, so if he made some journals and Yeah. It's all here. That's probably a lot better than this crazy chaos. <laughs> yep. Let's go here. Let's go here, configure permissions. Uh, server default and there we go I have made Deglin the owner of the bag of holding and everybody else is an observer ta-da oh there it is ta-da you can definitely oh, do that alright so so only he can update a, the bag of holding <laughs> right he's the one that does it so you will keep track. And then if you guys want to have somebody else on it, you can. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to give a brief v overview of what's coming in the future as we wind up tonight's episode and we sort of get through our treasure and all that stuff. As you guys, over the next couple of weeks, begin joining in and traveling along with Zad kill the righteous as every night he continues to have these visions doesn't know if they're occurring now or if they're future visions but whatever it is it's something calling to him he sees this desert mountainous region that he realizes is to the north he just has this feeling that he must go north it's a pole that he cannot resist and so he begins the underway trek, joined with his companions. Don't forget, you guys still have your horses. As you move your way north into the mountains, facing the dry heat, the weather in the summertime, going into the desert is no fun, nor is the proximity you are to the Nat Marsh. As the occasional breeze blows across the Aberals, bringing the smells and scents from across the mountain down into the valley on the western side of which you travel. Eventually you find yourselves in the bright desert as you continue your way north, skirting again the Aberals. You move through a region known as the Old Ithar. The ancient lands of the Sulm dynasty centuries ago when the king of Sulm, the king Shatados, made a pact with an evil, dark, forbidden god and in doing so brought ruin almost immediately upon his, uh, upon his lands. It's the story of the scorpion crown. It's something that we can talk about in another story but today you guys find yourselves now four weeks into your travel four weeks four weeks into travel as you guys have moved your way slowly through the desert following the, the nose of Zadkiel and every day a little piece of Zadkiel's soul seems to be stolen away as whatever this creature is doing to the steed that is calling him, it's beginning to have an effect on Zadkiel because he and the two are inexorably linked. At last it comes to a day where the uh, 
although the day is bright to start, a heavy sandstorm begins to blow, whipping up around you guys in a frenzy, horses nearly bolting, the flesh from your skin being peeled off by the little bits of sand, constantly sandblasting you along the way. Even the cloth masks across your face and the heavy armor that you wear seems to be no match for these minuscule grains of salty sand that find their way into every nook and cranny. And eventually, as the sun is beginning to set in the distance, casting long shadows over a valley that you come upon, you look up and you see this great, what can only be considered as a, I don't know, a, an ancient ruin in the desert of some kind. And if you look on the stream, I've got it up there for you. You can see this sort of glowing as the as the light hits the top of this you can see the some sort of a flickering electrical energy type light it flickers briefly and then disappears but Zadkiel looks he's half half of the man that he was when you guys first started this you sort of the gauntness in his eyes is this cheeks and begins to grow sallow he looks up and sort of points his finger and he's there there is where we must go I know it and that is where we're going to leave tonight's session hopefully everybody enjoyed our party as they made their way out of the land of the slave lords and back into the safety of their own homes in Dark Shelf where they now have so much treasure that they could probably buy the throne and go sit on there and rule the land without <laughs> yeah. ever having to adventure again. Yeah. Time to return, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Build my own uh, network of themes. Yep, exactly. So as always, as you, for folks that know, we are going to shift our way into the after party. If you've never been here before, you know that this is the time where we kind of hang out for a few minutes after the game and just kind of talk and shoot the breeze and do whatever the case may be. We do know some of our players are old like me. They have to be up early in the morning, so they do have to bail pretty early. Um, so those that want to hang around, I'm getting ready to shift over to in Discord. I'm going to go over to the open channel. Um, if you scroll down, at the very bottom of the, uh, at least on my ordering, at the very bottom, you got voice channels. We go to the open channel. Um, I'm just going to click there. Five, four, three, two, one. I am now in the open channel. So for those that are out on uh, Twitch, if you want to come join our Discord, we uh, highly encourage you to do so. Um, as I said before, I appreciate um, everybody kind of hanging out with us. Um, tonight we had a pretty good uh, pretty good stream going there for the longest time give or take um, up above uh, 20 on, on for a while there so that was kind of nice um, that's a little bit above our average but uh, yeah I definitely appreciate the word getting around hopefully you guys like I said enjoyed yourselves and you will come along and join us uh, next time so I know that looks like Lando Lando had to bail which is totally good uh, which is usual <clears throat> So, anyway, what's up, failures? Hope you you uh, enjoyed yourselves tonight. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm back. What did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> you missed the, the flying bone maneuver that I <laughs> yeah. did. Yeah, so, so Annex is out there in our in our chat. Annex is my DM in an online game that I'm doing play by post. Um, he has just hit us with a. Um, an ice ridden, per, uh, not, yeah, purple worm of some kind have no idea what it is, but I know that, um, basically it, in in the first round, well, we're like level 15 first round, it swallowed the guy we call tin man. Um, he's basically, uh, um, uh, I want to say almost like Warforged. That's kind of what I liken him to like a Warforged, although we're not playing Eberron, but, uh, yeah, swallowed him in one round. And then our, our, uh, our tabaxi 
she uh, she ran out there and she's usually like knifing up things for like 50 points of damage each. Oh yeah, stunned her. She's stunned for a minute. So I imagine she'll get at next. So yeah, I'm just kind of debating. Do I want to leave these guys here and just haul ass? Or <laughs> I've got like polymorph um, ready to go, but I haven't decided if I'm going to use it yet or not. Because uh, by the rules, um, anything that, whatever you polymorph, anything that, it carries or has with it whatever becomes part of it. So I'm just afraid polymorph ain't going to do nothing if Tin Man is inside and becomes part of the polymorph. So I don't know if I want to do that or there's a couple things I got, but we'll have to see what happens. And it's not my round yet. So fifth edition game online. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't played by post, you have to have a lot of patience. Um, I've got a play by post game that's been going on three years now <laughs> and Annex is a player in that game. And uh, I think they're like third level now or something like that. It's just crazy slow. But yeah, it's fun. It's been fun. So, uh, all right. Myth Ender had a bail. Dice always roll 20s. That would be nice, but I don't see that happening. So, oh, uh, looks like my uh, my uh, folks that I have in charge of my stream didn't do their thing as Cardman gave us that nat 20 earlier. That's okay. I'll take yeah. care of it. I'll take care of it. Yeah, you have to go in as a mod. Whenever somebody does that, you have to go in and select approve. Otherwise, it won't remove from their um, from their tokens, right? So if somebody gives a uses three thousand tokens, they it it won't take those tokens off until you go approve it. So where do you do, you do that? So, um, over on the left hand side, there's a there's a navigation bar, and if you go down to one that looks like a O with a little slash in it, if you mouse over, it says reward request queue, and if you click on it, it'll pop open and it'll show you any nat ones or nat twenties that people have, have done or whatever oh, the case. Okay. So yep. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, the guy's got a lot of good loot tonight, man. A lot of good loot. So So anyway, uh, monkey which you... What's that? This is probably I have to say this is probably my most enjoyable session out of all the sessions I've done. I mean, there's a lot. It was hard to say, but this one was really wow. As far as what the slave lords overall, or just this session just, tonight? Just how everything, like with the story, with the, oh. the sequencing, the everything that happened. I mean, it's like a, it was like told like a good story. The dice, I know you weren't happy the dice roll worked, our <laughs> way, but it yeah. was like the dice rolls <laughs> worked the way they were supposed to for the players, and it was yeah. like. It was good. It's just amazing. And just the community support <laughs> and just, this, you know. Yeah, that, that helped, man, because Varus being able to get that plus four so he got a 20 because he needed to get a 20 in order to hit him with that backstab, that helped. I mean, he had 90 hit points to start with, so it's not like he was a, an easy dude to bring down. So, yeah, yeah that's good. But, yeah, man, I appreciate all the support in the stream tonight, man. That was awesome. That was very cool. So, and like I said, we didn't, I mean, there are like two cheers or something like that. The, the, we had the 1500 and the 500, I think, are the, are the two that we had, are the two big ones that we had. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but I think as much as it's fun to get the cheers and, and all that other stuff, man, it was, I thought it was really cool <laughs> that we had so many people here tonight. Cause like I said, usually we'll have. Oh, 10, 12, 15, something like that. Well, we were up over 20 and stuff tonight, man, for for the while. I mean, it wasn't just like we peaked there. It was like we were sitting up there for a while, so it was kind of cool. The chat was very, fairly active. So. Yeah, yeah, I was watching. It wasn't too bad at all. It wasn't too bad. Unfortunately, I just don't watch the stream as much as I should because I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm supposed to do in the game. And that was <laughs> after a slow start, man, with the... Yeah, yeah, it was too. Worked out well. So. But I was, uh, I was kind of... I figured it was about time. I'm only like about two levels too late for, for Monkey and his War Horse. So I figured, you know what? Let's do a little sidetrack adventure in here. Should be able to get it done in one session. Ha 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 ha. Just kidding. I got uh, a question for you on the uh, old school essentials uh, mod that you're using. Yeah, yeah. Any way to adjust some of the things that it's doing? Like, um, uh, the so, so for example, losing my dexterity, right? So yep. dropped it to seven. Uh, in AD and D, that doesn't incur a penalty, but in OSE, I get a negative one. So my my AC. Um, yeah. So if you um, and if do you still have uh, Forge open? 
Yeah, I do. So if you go, um, I don't have it open, so I can't really look at the character. Well, I can, but if you, uh, so double click on your character to open up the character sheet. Yep. Um, on the top, uh, toward the left, not token, but there's, uh, I don't know if it's sheet or there's uh, tweaks. Click on tweaks. All right. And then you can add like a minus one or whatever, a plus one into your um, dex or AC bonus or something like that. Uh, okay. And you can, that's like a tweak that's like, oh, there, we got to do some one off or something. So you can add that. And when you save it, it sh should put your armor class back. You just have to remember when you get your dex back <laughs> to go fix that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and so yeah. if there's nothing listed here, like if there's something that needs a mod and it's not listed here, that would actually have to be a code change in their, their mod. Yeah, either a code change or would be something, if you get with me, because there's, I've, I've, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I can go through and say, oh, if I do this, I do that. Okay, now we're fixed. Yeah, so no there's, big there's deal. A, yeah, there's a few things I can do and some that I can't, but a lot of times, like I said earlier or previously before you actually, you know, when we were first talking, if a lot of times we just roll the dice and then we'll look and see if we hit, right? Because the, the OSC mod is supposed to automatically detect whether or not you hit or not. And sometimes you'll notice, oh, it says I hit, but in fact, I didn't. So it's like, well, yeah. crap. So we have to go in and say, okay, you didn't hit. Yeah, so. and that's, that's actually why in my little macro for my weapons, I, I found, how, found out how to add my character's Thacko. So, it, you know, right. at least then you get the three numbers that you need, right? You get your Thacko, <laughs> yeah. which you rolled on the 20. And as yeah. long as the 20's got all the pluses and minuses baked into it, it works works well. Um, yeah. Just a quick, quick review. But The one thing that I need to do is I don't like that you, you did the HTML in your uh in the role which is fine when it shows in chat but it doesn't look well when it pops up the pops little up bubble. The bubble yeah so if i need to turn that off well i was also going to experiment with it and see if you because you know in the chat you can actually do a forward slash uh, ooc yeah and it doesn't do the chat bubble it just puts it right in the chat um yeah. so i wonder if i preface the macros with that if it'll uh oh, if it'll dump it just in the chat i'll, I'll test it out yeah yeah i haven't played too much with them and stuff i haven't had a need for the macros but yeah so yeah, man, it was a good game. So let's talk really quick, uh, Monkey. What you got going on? Anything going on besides getting ready to go back to work? Uh, go back to work tomorrow. Um, Woo! Yeah, it's just training, it's just intro stuff. But then after tomorrow, it's more grind. Right. Two, uh, the kids come back on the fourteenth on a Tuesday, whatever the fourteenth, fifteenth, whatever that week is. And uh, yeah, today uh, they approved my my lizard folk. Uh, library so oh I have nice out there they, and they turned out pretty good i was like man yeah so i got some lizard folk if you guys want to check it out that's on roll 20 just type in mb's toy box and uh nice you'll have we have some tabletop virtual ready uh profiles like the ones we use here on the stream like the, yeah that they resemble those so very cool but yeah and that's about it and uh it's 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 slow but it's it's you know it's a little side hustle it helps a little bit so nice. what about you barris now that you're uh you're in deep with us now for two whole sessions how are things going with you you got anything big coming uh, up or any plans or anything going on no no nothing nothing too interesting really kind of uh my uh my mom on a personal note is uh going through some uh issues with cancer so i'm Oof. trying you know travel a little bit from time to time to go visit with her she's right. a couple hundred miles away yeah. um but you know other than that you know it's kind of life life is moving along i'm enjoying the game really enjoying the 1e e game so well i appreciate it man i appreciate it I hope you'll stick around for a while because absolutely most and people can only take so much a monkey hey <laughs> just so you know the ooc works by the way for the macro oh. very cool even better i like it yeah so See, is Ronnie still with us, or did he have to bail too? Nope, Ronnie had a bail. Oh well. But you, Deglin, anything going on? Not really. Just uh, painting a bunch of minis for my other game that my daughter's running. So I got a question. After yeah. tonight, when you go to do your LARP or whatever it is you guys call it, I can never remember, so don't judge me. Okay. Are you gonna show up with a femur bone and say ah. I did? I can do this. <laughs> I've seen it done, and I know it works. <laughs> they let you do that or you got to stick with swords and shit uh i'm sure they would let me use a femur bone because i want so I want. 
but uh, that's that's funny. Yeah, I, I prefer my sword. I, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. I imagine so. Yeah. And Red yeah. Sonic has a guy used the femur bone. See, there. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling yeah. you, and it ain't no joke. So yeah, I got nothing going on. I'm still living my best bachelor life. My daughter brought me dinner tonight. I was so happy because I was gonna like cook myself and or go order out whatever. But my daughter's like, I said, "What are you having for dinner tonight?" And she's like, "Oh, making turkey burgers and stuff with you know garlic aioli and stuff." Like, oh, sounds good. She goes, "Okay, I'll bring you one." <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> yeah, yes. but yeah, living my best bachelor life. I was my wife is away playing nanny to the grandson, so she should be back in a couple weeks, but. Yeah, it's kind of weird, man. It's like I can get on my computer whenever I want, and nobody's like, how long are you going to be on there? When are you coming back? Like, damn. I'm just They're trying to game. I know, they probably do. I know at least my uh, my one son will pop in once in a while, but uh, but not very often. But so yeah, yeah What's so, really going to be tough is when they return, man. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, it's all I've that been, free time. I can honestly say that I haven't really done much different than I normally do. I game Monday and Friday, well, every other Friday. But for the most part, I get off of work. I'll do a little bit. Like for the past couple of days, I've been game prepping, trying to get ready for Monkey's um, uh, side quest and, you know, kind of prepping what's coming after that. But for the most part, I've just been kind of, you know, chilling you know watching some tv you know get on my phone and play whatever game i'm playing at the time stuff like that so yeah i haven't really done much different so just can't wait for the wife to get home so i don't have to cook myself so that's the only thing that i really don't like having to do all the time is doing my own cooking and shit so but i do appreciate you guys uh 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 coming by appreciate you players Glad things are going well. Hopefully uh, this will continue for a long time to come. But in the meantime, don't forget we are here every Monday, 7.30 to 11.30 here on Agora Quest. Um, this is our 1E1 shots. On Fridays we do our 5th edition, um, what we call our Heroes of Christrich. Uh, we have a 5th edition campaign set in the in Perrinland. I hope you guys will be able to join us. This coming Friday is our game day. Um, and so our party is currently involved in a one of a story arcs for one of the characters whose sister apparently used to be a, pal a palace guard, but was said to have been involved with an attempted assassination. And so because of that, if you if you know Perrinland, it's very rigorous and ordered and very clan centered. And so dishonoring the clan is the worst thing you could ever do. And so this family, her family, has been banished from the clan until such a time as the daughter is brought to justice and proved that the rest of the family wasn't in on it. And so she is off gallivanting, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. They've discovered that some, some evil in the land has been sort of spreading its fingers. Um, and so little do they know that it could be related to a quest that they were on earlier where they destroyed an ancient artifact, but they were warned what would happen if they destroyed it. And so the plot thickens. So hopefully you guys can join us on Friday. It's definitely a fun game. Got some great players. Monkeys in that one too. So yeah, we've got to figure out what what we can do with your tokens, monkey. It's twice the pleasure or twice the pain. How are you looking? Yeah, it depends on you look. Depends on how the dice are rolling. But uh, we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us tonight. For those that just showed up, I do apologize, but we're getting ready to get out of here. I am going to raid um, into uh, Darling tonight. I haven't raided her in a while. And the last couple that I've raided, um, it, they're, they're great folks. But you know something? Um, acknowledgement is everything. But when you do a raid and all your all your uh, raiders that come with you are all like blasting away and they don't even acknowledge that you raided in, shit like that just bugs me. Um, and so, I don't know. Did we raid into a stream that was like pre-recorded or something like that? But... We're getting ready to get out of here. We're going to head over to Darling Creep Show. So if you guys haven't ever seen her stream, she is awesome. She does D&D stuff. She does, she's miniature painting right now. She's got um, what looks to be uh, some kind of a beholder or a beholder kin of some kind that she's painting. It looks pretty awesome. But uh, we're going to we're gonna bounce on over to her. She's got a bunch of people there, so we're just going to add to it. So hopefully you will uh, be able to stick with us um, as we go over there. Like I said, you get over there and just do a lot of... Uh, um, 
hemming and hawing and, and letting her know that, that we are there um, because she definitely deserves it. And so we're going to try to get over there with as many as we can. Um, I appreciate every one of you guys. And uh, just remember, in a world that you can be anything that you want, all we ask is that you be kind. We will see you next time, folks. Peace. Later, guys. Later. See you. Bye. Oh, the bag of holding an update journal. Oh, hi, everybody. Hey, what's Except up, Agora Quest? The only thing I added was the scrolls. How's it going? Yeah. How's it going, guys? Can I get a shout out for Agora Quest? Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. We're getting ready to watch the Munsters movie.